Grocery prices have gone up almost 5% from 2022 to 2023, but so has eating out. Eating out has actually gone up over 7% from last year. So the good news is, is that even though prices have gone up on groceries, it's still cheaper to eat at home. And today I've got almost three hours of awesome budget food ideas for you in this video. It is jam packed. You are not gonna wanna miss it, so let's jump in. So here's the front of the cookbook. It's Cook Once, Eat All Week by Cassie Joy Garcia. And the premise of this cookbook is that you have three core ingredients every week that you use to meal prep. So for example, one week um, she may have you use shredded chicken, broccoli, and rice. And then all of your meals that you meal prep are based off of those three ingredients. And this is not only more practical, but it also helps you keep the cost down because you're not buying as many ingredients. So each prep is laid out with the shopping list and then it kind of goes into the prep step by step and then you go into the recipes. So if you're new to meal prepping, um, this would be a great starter meal prep cookbook. Even if you're not new to meal prepping, it's still a great resource. This week, our core ingredients are ground pork, cabbage, and red potatoes. And so I'm gonna show you first what the ingredients are for these recipes, and then we are going to prep chorizo and potato tacos with cilantro lime slaw. I'm so excited to taste these. Uh, an egg roll in a bowl. And lastly is the Swedish meatballs over mashed potatoes. Now, if I have time today, I'm also going to make some banana muffins. So we'll see if I have time for that. So here's everything that you'll need for these meals. Uh, the recipe, or the recipes rather, call for five pounds of ground pork, but I'm going to use some ground pork and some ground beef. I'm gonna use the pork for the tacos and the egg roll in a bowl and then I'm going to use the beef for the Swedish meatballs. You'll need three pounds of red potatoes, one yellow onion, some carrots, a bunch of parsley, two limes. The recipes call for green onions but I have chives out on my back deck so I'm going to substitute those instead. Some fresh garlic, butter, uh, the taco recipe calls for cotija cheese but we don't really care for that too much so I'm going to use Monterey Jack instead. You also need a bunch of cilantro, some fresh ginger. I always keep mine in the freezer. Some corn tortillas. I have yellow corn tortillas just because that's what I found in the store. Uh, some heavy whipping cream, one head of cabbage, some mayo, uh, avocado oil or olive oil. You also need some sesame oil, some type of chicken broth. So whether you want to use chicken broth in a can, uh, I like to use this chicken bouillon because I can always keep it in my pantry or in my spice cabinet rather and make uh, chicken broth out of it. You'll also need some coconut milk if you want. Um, I believe this is for use in the dressing for the tacos. I don't think I'm going to use this because I don't need to make it dairy free but if you did need to make it dairy free you'd need this coconut milk. I'm going to need rice vinegar, soy sauce or coconut aminos and some apple cider vinegar. And then here are the spices that you'll need. I did not have to purchase any spices for this. I already had these in my cupboard. So just keep in mind, if you don't have a lot of spices on hand, you may need to purchase some of those and that may drive your cost up a little bit. But once you build up a good spice cabinet, these will obviously last you a while and then you can spend less at the grocery store going forward. So you'll need onion powder, some red pepper flakes, cinnamon, paprika, chili powder, uh, some cumin, garlic powder, some uh, dried parsley flakes, uh, sage, oregano, and then cloves, allspice, and sesame seeds. As a mom who is constantly cooking and doing things for my family, I definitely need to take time each day to relax a little bit. I did that today by playing June's Journey. Thank you so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game with a detective story taking you back to the 1920s and they have a diverse cast of characters. Each new scene takes you further through a thrilling murder mystery story that sets the main protagonist, June Parker, in a quest to solve the murder of her sister and uncover her many family secrets. The best part is that this game is available for free on mobile devices, Android and iOS, and on the desktop 
through Amazon and Facebook. June's journey is relaxing and it provides an escape, especially for me as a busy working mom. And it's still lightly challenging in a way, you know, that's still relaxing, but still allows you to put your sense of observation to test and keep your mind fresh. So go down to the description box below and download June's journey for free and start playing today. And thank you to my audience so much for using my links and supporting my channel. All right, so we are going to start out this meal prep by baking a third of the red potatoes. And this is going to be for the chorizo and potato tacos. So I just have three of the red skin potatoes that I washed. I'm poking those with a fork. That's very important to do that. Make sure that uh, they don't explode in the oven. I've actually had that happen before. I drizzled a little bit of olive oil on there and I'm going to put those in a 375 degree oven for 60 to 75 minutes or until they are tender and baked all the way through. Next up, I'm going to make the mashed potatoes and this is going to be for the uh, Swedish meatball recipe. And so I'm taking uh, the other part of the potatoes and I'm just going to peel them. You don't necessarily have to peel these. I know a lot of people with, especially with red skin potatoes, they'll just leave the skin on. I was actually going to give this particular meal, the meatballs and mashed potatoes to my grandparents. And I know sometimes um, my grandma has issues with um, potato peeling and like high fiber things and so in order to cater to them I wanted to go ahead and peel them so it doesn't take me very long um, I actually don't mind peeling potatoes so once I get all the skin off of these I'm just going to rinse them off under cold water and then chop them up into kind of medium sized chunks um, when you're making mashed potatoes you don't want to cut the chunks of potato too small or the potatoes will tend to get waterlogged but you also don't want to cut them too large because then they'll take a long time to boil and the outside will get cooked before the inside gets cooked so i kind of just try to cut them into a medium dice and i'll put them in the pot fill that up with water and some salt and get that on the stove um, i do get questions sometimes about these uh, pretty blue pans that i have with the white interiors i'll have those linked down below as well as any other kitchen tools that I use in this video. Um, there'll be links for those in the description box. And if I miss something, definitely leave me a comment and I will add that. <music> All right, so now we're gonna get started on the meal prep for both the egg roll in a bowl and the rest of the chorizo and potato tacos. So what's nice about this cookbook is it kind of goes step by step um, and what you need to do for the next step in the meal prep. And so now we're going to brown the ground pork. So if you'll remember, I actually chose to use ground beef for the meatballs and I'm using ground pork for the egg roll in a bowl and the chorizo tacos. So I have my ground pork in uh, my big Cuisinart skillet here. I love that for browning, sorry, I can't talk, browning large uh, quantities of large meat. It has deep sides and it does a really great job. And I'm also using uh, my meat chopper to just get that meat into as fine of chunks as I can. I would also say um, you might have to drain your ground pork depending on how lean it is. I did have to drain mine just because there was a bit of grease in the bottom and I didn't want that to end up in my finished dishes. While that is cooking, I'm going to dice up my onion and this is going to be for the egg roll in a bowl. So I just have one yellow onion here that I'm cutting into a dice. Um, this knife that I'm using here is a new one. It's a mizen knife. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to get 20% off. I really love this knife. I've been using it for about the past three weeks to a month now and I have no complaints with it. It is super sharp and it has um, done a good job for me in the kitchen. Next, I am crushing some garlic cloves and this is going to go into the egg roll in a bowl also. You can use garlic paste or pre-minced garlic, but um, I seem to have quite a few bulbs of garlic in my pantry that I'm trying to work through, so I decided to use fresh. Here is some ginger. I keep this in my freezer and it grates up really well with the microplane. So here are all my uh, sort of aromatic vegetables for the egg roll in a bowl, the onion, garlic, and ginger. And so I'm just putting those in a bowl and setting them to the side until I am ready to cook with them. Here are the potatoes. These are just about done now. I usually use a fork to kind of poke through them and check for doneness. And then here is the ground pork and that is almost ready as well. 
Next step is to make the meatballs for the Swedish meatballs. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and cook these in the oven. And that is the meal prep portion of this particular recipe. Um, if you end up getting this cookbook and kind of read through, there's sort of a different way that you can approach this than me. You can choose to prep only components of the meal prep um, and then do most of the cooking you know the night when you're going to make it but since I was filming this for you guys and I wanted the meals to be mostly ready I'm actually doing more of the cooking up front so just keep that in mind that does take a little bit longer during the meal prep day but then obviously you'll save time um, during the week I get um, questions sometimes about you know how do you have time or how do you make time to meal prep and you know the whole principle behind that is that you're just you're trading off time right so you might spend a couple hours on a Saturday or Sunday prepping these dishes but you're also going to save time during the week so it, it just depends on when you want to spend your time and sometimes you know when you get off work especially if you work like a traditional schedule you're just too exhausted to even think about cooking or putting together a whole meal and so sort of doing all of the prep work when you have more time on the weekends or it doesn't necessarily have to be a weekend right like let's say if you um, you know work in healthcare or you work night shift or something like that if you have a couple days off during the week like a Tuesday Wednesday you could do your meal prep then so to me it's just all about trading time and when do I feel like I can be most productive in the kitchen versus when do I feel like I want to spend less time in the kitchen so for my meatballs um, there are a, a few spices that I mixed in there that were kind of unique um, dried parsley sage salt pepper garlic powder onion powder cinnamon allspice and cloves and I was a a little bit skeptical about the combination but actually tasted one of these uh, with the gravy and it ended up being really good so I used my cookie scoop to kind of portion these meatballs out into equal sizes and then I just rolled them into balls I have them on a cookie sheet that I mixed that I mixed no I have them on a cookie sheet that I sprayed with uh, nonstick spray and then I'm going to pop those in the oven. Uh, the recipe says to bake them at 400 degrees for 18 minutes until lightly browned. Okay, so my ground pork is done cooking and while I have that draining, I'm just going to use the same skillet to saute my onion and ginger and garlic. This is for the egg roll in a bowl. You could definitely pre-chop your veggies and wait to do this the night that you were going to cook it. Um, but I'm, again, I'm doing it more at the at the beginning so I have less work to do during the week so after the veggies were sauteed I went ahead and added half of the ground pork that I had cooked back into the skillet and then we're just gonna add a bunch of um, seasoning and veggies to this sort of like a traditional egg roll um, you know filling that you would make and actually I did end up using this later in the week as a filling for some egg rolls so you'll see that in an upcoming video but I have to say I've tried different recipes before for egg roll in a bowl and I'm not always thrilled with them just because I'm not a huge fan of cooked cabbage I'll eat it it's just not my favorite thing um, but this recipe was really good I cannot recommend this cookbook enough I've probably made over 10 recipes out of it now and I have never had a bad recipe I think all of the flavors are spot on most of the ingredients are whole foods and a lot of them are family friendly so definitely think about picking up this cookbook um, if you haven't yet so again with the cabbage I'm just shredding that my knife is making really quick work of it half of this is going to go in the egg roll recipe and then half is going to go in the chorizo taco recipe for the slaw in addition to some of the cabbage that we're gonna put in the egg roll in a bowl, we also need some shredded carrots. You could definitely buy pre-shredded carrots to make this a lot quicker. I had some carrots already in my fridge and I wanted to use those up. So I went ahead and just peeled them and then I'm going to grate them on a box grater. So here again is my pork mixture. I added the shredded cabbage to that. And then you can just cook this over medium heat until 
the cabbage is cooked to your liking. I don't necessarily like super crispy cabbage and cooked dishes, so I tend to cook it a little bit longer, but that's definitely up to you. Um, this box grater I actually got from Ikea like a long time ago. I don't have a link to it, but if you don't have one of these, it's a super versatile tool in your kitchen, and if you like to shred your own cheese, it's definitely something you should have on hand. I'll link a comparable one uh, down below on Amazon. I've looked them up before and I think there is a, a Cuisinart one or an OXO one, I can't remember, that's good quality for a pretty decent price. So I added my shredded carrots to the egg roll mixture and I'm just going to stir that around. And you only really need to cook this for a couple minutes. Um, obviously the carrots, since they're so small and we shredded them, don't need to cook for that long. Um, but then after the carrots and the cabbage are added, you can add your seasonings and vinegar and oil and all of that stuff. So we're going to add some coconut aminos. I have been really liking this more than I have been liking uh, soy sauce. Let me know if you guys have tried it. It is hard to find around here where I live, and so I usually order it from Thrive Market. Um, but I think that it's milder and it tastes better than soy sauce, but if you have soy sauce on hand, definitely use that as well. I'm also adding some chili flakes and sesame oil and some rice vinegar, and I'm gonna stir that around. You can also add salt and pepper to this and then just go ahead and taste it and see if you think that it needs anything else. I thought that the recipe as written was perfect. Again, I am not necessarily a huge fan of egg roll in a bowl, but this one was a definite winner for me. Okay, so I just put this mixture into a big nine by 13 dish to store for the week, but I also wanted to share with you guys what it looks like on the plate. This reheats really, really well. You could also do it for a lunch meal prep if you're looking for a quick option just to reheat during the week. Definitely would recommend this recipe out of the cookbook. It is fabulous and I will be making it again sometime. Okay, so next up we're going to make the cilantro lime dressing, and this is going to be for the chorizo potato tacos. So in my food processor, I have some mayonnaise, some cilantro leaves. Um, I actually added a few tablespoons of heavy cream because I didn't want to use the coconut milk, or I didn't want to open a whole can of coconut milk just for that. I also added the juice of one lime and some chives, or you could also use green onions. And then that's it, just process it in your blender or your food processor, and then pour it into a jar and store it in the refrigerator. So this is going to end up being the dressing for the cabbage, and it's going to kind of be like a slaw that goes on top of the tacos, which is really good. But I also use this as just a sauce plain on top of some other tacos that we had during that week and it was just as good. Definitely if you like cilantro lime, try that out. Okay, so we're gonna finish preparing the Swedish meatball recipe. So I have my cooked potatoes back in my hot pot here. I added a little bit of milk, salt, pepper, and some butter, and I'm just going to give those a good mash until they are all creamy. Mashed potatoes are another thing that reheats fairly well. Um, in the oven or microwave if you want to prep them during the weekend. Uh, they do tend to be a little bit runnier when you heat them up, so just keep that in mind and make them a little bit stiffer so that they do, don't get too runny when you reheat them. Now I'm going to make the gravy for the Swedish meatballs. So I just have some butter and some flour in the bottom of my pot, and I'm just going to cook that together, and that will be my thickening agent for the sauce. After that, I'm going to add in some chicken stock, and then I added a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to this. The recipe doesn't call for it, but anytime I've made Swedish meatball recipes before, I find that they always call for Worcestershire sauce, and that, to me, gives it uh, a beefier flavor, I think. I'm not quite sure if I'm explaining that correctly, but um, it does make it taste a little bit better. After that was partially thickened, I added in just a quarter cup of cream, and that's going to make your gravy a little bit creamier. There was also some salt and pepper in there. So definitely simmer this, um, put your meatballs back in, definitely taste it. 
uh, to see if it needs more salt, more pepper, um, you know, season it to your liking. And then this will reheat really well during the week. So I did go ahead and put the meatballs back in, um, sort of heat them up in the gravy. And then I packed it in a foil pan because like I said, I was giving this to my grandparents for a meal. Um, I think this whole quarantine um, you know, social distancing thing has been uh, hard for them just because, you know, it's hard anyway when you're elderly and you're at home and you're kind of isolated. But I think this time has made it a little bit worse for everyone. And so I've been trying to bring them a meal every couple weeks just to kind of brighten up their spirits. So I packed that up in some foil. I used a little foil divider and I also sprinkled some parsley on top of the meatballs. So there you go creamy mashed potatoes and Swedish meatballs. I really hope that they enjoyed it. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I put together the rest of the meal prep for the chorizo potato tacos. And I considered peeling these potatoes before I diced them up. These are the potatoes that I baked in the oven, but I decided to just leave the peeling on and it worked out just fine. So these are totally cool at this point and I'm just cutting them into a small dice. You do want to try to cut these potatoes into a smaller dice since you're gonna be putting these in some corn tortillas for tacos, you don't want large chunks of potato. All right, so I'm gonna crisp up those potatoes in a skillet with a little bit of olive oil, remove those, and then we're gonna make uh, the spices for the chorizo portion of this recipe. So this isn't necessarily a traditional chorizo, I don't think. Um, this is more of a ground pork that you're gonna crisp up in a pan with a little bit of vinegar and spices, and it makes a delicious mixture. I personally am not a huge fan of the Mexican chorizo that comes in the tubes. Um, I think that it tends to be a little bit slimy when you cook it, um, and it's also very greasy. So Adam and I have tried it before in different recipes. We're not a huge fan of it. So this is definitely a good option for you if you want to try this. It definitely tastes like an authentic chorizo. It just is a little bit less greasy. So I have the rest of my ground pork in my skillet there. I added just a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar and the spices. So for the spices, I used salt, chili powder, paprika, cumin, oregano, and pepper. And then you're just gonna cook that in the skillet with the spices and the vinegar until it gets nice and brown and crispy like this. We actually used this for some tacos during the week for lunches, and I also used it to make some um, chorizo hash and eggs for Adam one morning on the weekend. So after your chorizo is crisped up, or your pork rather, uh, put the potatoes back in, stir it around, give it a taste, see if it needs more salt or anything. Mine did not, it was perfect delicious taco filling. I would definitely recommend you guys trying this. So this is the other half of the cabbage that I shredded up and I'm just putting that in a bowl and adding some of that cilantro lime dressing and stirring that around and this is what we're going to use to top our tacos with. I'm also going to uh, cut up some limes to go on the side of the tacos. So this is something that I would definitely do ahead of time to save time during the week and this is how I meal prepped this. So I had a large glass dish with the meat filling. I had a smaller dish with the slaw. Here are the uh, corn tortillas that I use. I used to use the yellow corn tortillas and the Monterey Jack cheese and the limes to go on the side. And then I also wanted to show you guys what it looks like all together. So I added a little bit of extra cilantro on top with a squeeze of lime. These were so good. I would definitely recommend that you try them. Like I said, all of the recipes that I use today are in this cookbook. So if you want to grab it for yourself, head over to that link in my description box and grab it. Okay, so last but not least, we're gonna make some chocolate chocolate chip banana muffins. The original recipe calls for a glaze. I typically don't make the glaze on top of it, but my kids love mini muffins, and I try not to buy a lot of the times the packaged ones, and so um, it's easier for me and better for them if I just make them homemade. So I have a little bit of butter in my uh, stand mixer along with some monk fruit sweetener. I decided to use that instead of regular sugar just to cut down on the sugar 
content in this recipe a little bit and then I'm going to need three bananas so instead of mashing the bananas separately I just chose to add them in small chunks to the mixer and sort of mash them up with the butter and sugar mixture less dishes that way uh, this original recipe I've made this before on my channel it is a skinny taste recipe and so I can link this recipe down below if you guys want to try it out my kids love it uh, I am adding one quarter cup of applesauce as well as some vanilla and the original recipe calls for two egg whites but I normally just substitute one egg I'm not super concerned about cutting down you know in on the fat in this recipe so in order to cut down on waste i just use one egg and it works out just fine <music> So next I'm adding the dry ingredients, uh, which is flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, and salt. If you want to follow the recipe exactly, you would whisk these together in a separate bowl before adding them. I like to live dangerously, so I typically just add them right to <laughs> my mixer because uh, ain't nobody got time for that. But uh, at any rate, I'm also going to add some mini chocolate chips, just about half a cup. Um, that's optional, but you know, half a cup distributed throughout all of these muffins isn't going to add a significant amount of sugar and uh, it makes them taste really delicious. So I have a mini muffin tin here. Um, this one I got from, I think I got it from Home Goods, but I love it. It is super nonstick. I don't have to use liners. It makes the perfect size mini muffins. This one is also available on Amazon, so I'll link it down below. I just spray it really generously with some canola oil and then I use again my trusty cookie scoop that's the same one I use for my meatballs obviously I washed it <laughs> and then I'm adding those to the wells of the muffin tin and uh, these end up being pretty easy to remove um, once you uh, spray them with the cooking spray so I make a lot of different varieties of mini muffins um, I have a chocolate chip pumpkin muffin recipe that my kids really like I also make a uh, peanut butter banana muffin uh, recipe and sometimes I add chocolate chips to that as well um, but I just like to keep these on a cake plate in uh, my kitchen and it's something that my kids can grab for breakfast and like I said it makes me feel better knowing that they're homemade I can control what goes into them rather than buying the prepackaged ones so I'm gonna pop those in the oven and bake them according to the recipe directions here is what they look like when they turn out I think I would have ended up with uh, one more <laughs> mini muffin had I of um, paid attention to dividing the batter evenly but alas I was one short but anyway these um, I didn't let them cool quite as long as I should because I had somewhere to go um, if I would have let them cool a little bit more they would have come out of the pan a little bit better you can see that some of them end up being torn which is fine so I just like to remove these and put them on a cooling rack and then once they're cool you can store them in a airtight container I keep them on the counter at room temperature for um, a couple of days I would say three to four days just check on them make sure they don't get moldy and any that you're not going to use right away you can definitely freeze and they turn out really well like that well you guys asked and I am here to deliver today's video is going to be another extreme budget meals video we are going to make five dinners for your family all for under forty dollars and we are using ground beef and all ingredients from walmart we are going to be making a beef chili with some cornbread muffins we are also making migas with some homemade pinto beans and pico de gallo i'm also sharing a recipe for a really delicious ground beef and potato casserole with cucumber salad we are making baked potatoes with chili and a lettuce salad and last but not least homemade tostadas with ground beef beef and homemade refried beans these recipes all turned out so delicious and the fact that you can buy all of these ingredients and feed a family of four for the whole week is pretty awesome so the first thing that we need to do is soak our pinto beans now if you have an instant pot you don't have to pre-soak these but the last video I did and made pinto beans in my instant pot I got quite a few comments that not everyone has an instant pot so I'm just gonna show you that you obviously don't have to have one <laughs> to make dried beans so I just have my pinto 
pinto beans here in my salad spinner. You could do it in a large bowl also. This is just convenient because it has the strainer in it. So I just have some cold water over these and these are gonna soak for about six to eight hours. Okay, so my beans are finished cooking. It didn't take long to cook them, maybe 45 minutes since I pre-soaked them. So all I did after I soaked them is I put them in this pot uh, covered with plenty of cold water. I added some salt, some dried oregano, and some garlic cloves, and a bay leaf. You could also add a chunk of onion if you wanted to, but I'm saving it for the other recipes. And that's it, I just basically let them cool and I'm putting them into containers. Okay, so here are our beans. So one pound of pinto beans, once you cook them up, makes about two of these four cup containers. Now I did leave some of the liquid in there just so they don't dry out in the refrigerator, but these are prepped now. So we'll be using these for our recipes this week. And this is a great way to save a little bit of money. Usually the canned beans are around 50 cents each, 50 to 70 cents actually now. And the dried beans, you obviously get a, a lot more, probably I would say four times as much for just a dollar. All right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just saute all the ground beef up at once. I have three pounds in here. We're going to divide this amongst three recipes but I need it cooked and crumbled for all of them. So I just have it in a big pot here. This is the same pot that I'm gonna end up making the chili in. I'm just gonna season this with some like multi-purpose seasoning. This is an everything seasoning. It's got salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Next, I'm gonna just chop this onion up. I'm gonna try and chop it as fine as I can because that's the way my family prefers it. So I'm gonna put most of the onion in here with the ground beef, but I'm gonna leave some of it in the bowl because we're gonna make a quick pico de gallo. Next, I'm gonna cut up some of these tomatoes and add them into the onion here. I'm also gonna chop up one of these jalapenos and add it. I'm not gonna include the seeds because I don't want it to be super hot. If some get in there, that's fine, but then I'm gonna save the other jalapeno for the chili. Okay, so I actually transferred this into a larger bowl because <laughs> it, was, it was overflowing. So now I'm gonna chop up some cilantro and put it in there. I'm going to take out some of the stems. All right, we need some lime juice. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm probably going to use the juice of two limes. Okay, I'm going to give this a stir and then I just season my pico with salt and pepper, and that's it. And this will keep in the fridge for a couple days, I would say at least three, three to four days, probably five days. I mean, it'll break down a little bit, but it'll still taste good. I forgot I was gonna add garlic to this, so I'm gonna add two cloves of that. It gives it a really great flavor, and also if you've ever made homemade guacamole, or if you ever make it, try it adding fresh crushed garlic to it as well. It's really, really good. Okay, so I went ahead and drained the ground beef. This three pounds made about six cups. So I'm just kind of trying to think about how I'm gonna you know, divide this up strategically. I think what I'm going to do is take one cup out and reserve that on the side for the scalloped potato casserole, just because I feel like it has a lot of potatoes in it and I don't need as much beef. And that leaves me with about five cups. So I think I'm gonna use half of it for the chili and half of it for the tostadas. Okay, so I've got my ground beef in here. I'm gonna make the meat for the tostadas. And I put about, I don't know, a tablespoon of tomato paste 
And then I'm gonna add spices. And since we did not put it in our budget to buy taco seasoning, I'm just gonna use what I have on hand and I'm gonna eyeball it, but you can Google for a homemade recipe. So I'm gonna put chili powder, some ground coriander, cumin, and a little bit of garlic powder. And then I'm just gonna stir that around a little bit before I add some water. All right, I'm gonna add a cup of water and then I'll add more if I need it. But basically, it's just going to cook until everything thickens, and then I'll taste it and see if it needs any more seasoning. Okay, so for the beans for the tostadas, I've got a skillet here, and I just have a little pat of butter in the bottom of there. You could use oil, too, if you wanted to. And I'm going to use half of this container of beans, which is about two cups. I'm going to save the other half for another meal. And then I'm just going to cook these over medium heat and mash them up a little bit. I don't want them totally, totally mashed. And then I'll also taste and season them as needed, probably with some cumin, salt, pepper, maybe a little garlic powder. I don't know, we'll see how they taste. I need shredded cheese for all these recipes. So since I had a lot to shred, I'm gonna go ahead and shred it in my food processor. So simple to do, highly recommend it. Okay, so I've got my head of lettuce here. We need part of this for the salad for one night and then part of it for the tostadas. So I think I'm just gonna take off about, I don't know, that much. We'll shred this up and use it tonight for the tostadas. Go ahead and wash it. So for the shells, we're gonna use these uh, white corn tortillas that we picked up. And I'm just shallow frying these in a little bit of vegetable oil. You could also do them in the air fryer. They take longer <laughs> that way and you can't do as many at once. So that's why I'm doing it in a skillet. But you just need a little bit of oil in the bottom there and basically just, you know, fry them up until they're crisp on each side, drain them onto paper towels. And when they come out of the oil and they're hot, just sprinkle them with some salt and they'll taste exactly like homemade tortilla chips. Yum. Okay, so my shells are all crisped up. I forgot my beans back here. Those thickened up. We're just going to kind of use those for a little bit of glue on the bottom of the shells. And then I've got my taco meat is here. Turned out good. So I'll show you how to put these together. So I just put a little bit of beans on the bottom and we're going to add the meat. And one of the tricks to, you know, these particular budget meals that I'm making is to mix the ground beef with the beans in meals because that will help stretch your ground beef. All right, next we'll add the cheese. And we'll do a little bit of lettuce, sour cream, and our pico. Whoops. Drop some on the floor. <laughs> All right, well, I would say that looks pretty dang good for an extreme budget meal. Don't you think, Murphy? <laughs> so we've got our tortadas, beans, beef, cheese, pico, Lettuce, sour cream, super good, yum. Okay, so it's the next morning and I just have to give you guys an update on those tostadas that I made last night. They were so good, everyone loved them. Tostadas are a little bit messy to eat, but they're still fun, kind of a different take on tacos. So now I'm making my next extreme budget meal out of this group, which is migas. And I am gonna make these for breakfast, but you could make them for whatever lunch, dinner, if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna heat up the other half portion of beans that I didn't use last night because those can go on the migas as well. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these 10 corn tortillas into strips. Bam, ta-da! Okay, I'm gonna put these in a skillet with a little bit of avocado oil and just crisp them up. Okay, so I've got 10 eggs cracked in here. I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of this everything seasoning. Okay, so you can see the tortillas have gotten nice and crispy. I also added a little bit of jalapeno and two cloves of minced garlic. And I'm just gonna add the eggs a little bit at a time and stir everything around until they're cooked. Okay, so you can top these with whatever you want. I just have some of the leftover beans on top of mine, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of shredded cheese. You could add sour cream if you wanted to as well. 
avocado, guacamole, bacon. <laughs> Bacon is not in the budget. And then I'm just gonna add some of the leftover pico that we had last night from the tostadas and bam, breakfast or dinner or lunch, whatever you wanna make it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make our chili. So in this big pot here, I've got a couple tablespoons of olive oil just so I can saute the remainder of my jalapeno. And then I've got my ground beef here that I cooked up previously. This is about a pound and a half. I'm gonna add that as well. some garlic left too to spare so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in with the ground beef. Okay I've got to show you guys this can opener that I got. It's called the Kitchen Mama can opener. You just it's got a magnet on it and you just hook it onto there and then it opens the can. You can just walk away and do something else. Okay so I'm gonna add a can of tomato sauce, a can of petite diced tomatoes and a can of roast salt. All right, so here is the remainder of the beans that we had cooked up. So we're gonna go ahead and add those. I would say this is probably equivalent to about two cans of beans. Okay, so if you'll remember, I also have some tomato paste left over from the taco meat, I believe it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the chili as well. And then I like to add some water just to thin it out a little bit. And honestly, if you add water to tomato paste, it makes like a tomato sauce anyway. So I'll probably just fill up one of these big cans and add it in there and then we'll add the seasoning. Okay, so I'm gonna start with adding a quarter cup of chili powder and be like, oh my gosh, that seems like a lot. Well, a quarter cup is only four tablespoons and you've got quite a bit of liquid in there. So it definitely needs some flavor. I might need to add some more, we will see. Okay, so I added about a tablespoon of cumin, probably a couple teaspoons of ground coriander some salt, some pepper, and I also added just a teaspoon of sugar. I always like to do that when I make tomato product stuff because it cuts the acidity of the tomatoes a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this, simmer it for probably about 20 minutes, and then we'll taste it and see what seasoning it needs. Okay, so to go with the chili, we're gonna make a doctored up Jiffy corn muffin mix. So I've got one box of that, a tablespoon of sugar, some vegetable oil, sour cream, egg, and some milk, and I'll link this recipe down below as well. So I'm gonna put these in muffin cups, but you could also do it in like a nine by nine or an eight by eight dish also. Okay, so I got 10 muffins out of that. These are gonna bake for about 20 minutes. Okay, so our chili's done. I went ahead and tasted it after it got done simmering for about 20 minutes. I added a little bit more salt, a tiny bit more sugar and some more coriander and chili powder and it's perfect. You definitely want to taste it, you know, season to taste as always, obviously, because everyone likes theirs differently. So I'm just going to kind of let this rest. Obviously, we're going to use part of the leftovers for this for another meal, but I'm waiting on the corn muffins to finish baking. All right, so here's our chili. I'm going to add some of a little bit of our frozen, frozen shredded cheese da, da, da. meal number whatever this is <laughs> i forgot we've got our chili with some shredded cheese and our corn muffins i put a little pat of butter on the top yum super budget friendly meal but still really delicious definitely a classic okay so the next meal that i wanted to share with you guys was this ground beef and potato casserole and this cucumber salad unfortunately i lost the footage of me actually making the dish but obviously i'll have the recipes linked down below and i'm just going to explain it to you it's very self-explanatory anyway one of the things i would recommend for making at least the casserole recipe but you could also use it for the cucumbers as well is a mandolin slicer these are pretty expensive. I actually picked this one up at Aldi many years ago, but I'll link a similar one down below. Basically, it allows you to cut the potatoes very evenly. 
and thinly so that they can cook in the casserole. This is very simple to make, super simple ingredients. What you need for the casserole is one pound of the ground beef that I reserved from cooking it the other day. Uh, you will need some butter, some garlic. I also added some flour and milk that I had here at home, some chicken broth as well, and then some dried thyme leaves, some dried parsley, and some sea salt. And essentially what you do is you slice your potatoes super thin, three pounds of those, and then you make like a white sauce with the milk and the chicken broth, and you add a little bit of the shredded cheese to that. And then you basically layer in your casserole dish, you know, potatoes, sauce, ground beef, potatoes, sauce, ground beef, three layers of that. Sprinkle a little bit of extra cheese on the top, cover it with foil and bake it in the oven. It comes out so good and it makes a whole nine by 13 dish. So honestly, you could feed more than four people with this. And then for the cucumber salad, this is super easy. Basically, I just peeled slices of the peel off the edge of the cucumber. I sliced it using one of the thicker blades on the mandolin. And then I used a little bit of onion that I had here at home, but that's optional. And then the only ingredients in the dressing are white vinegar, or I used white wine vinegar, sugar and salt, and I added a little bit of pepper. And it's really, really simple, but honestly, it's a, like a really refreshing salad for summer. Obviously super budget friendly because it's just made with cucumbers and things <laughs> that you already have on hand. So yeah, this is our fourth dinner that I'm sharing with you guys in this extreme budget meal and definitely try this one. I definitely think that your family will love the potatoes and the cucumber salad is awesome as well. Okay, so after we made the potato casserole, I had exactly four potatoes left. So I baked those in the oven. I just like to, I wash and scrub my potatoes obviously and then I rub them with olive oil and salt and I put them on a baking sheet. Usually I line it with foil. And then I just bake them at 425 degrees for, it usually takes about an hour. Depends on how you know big the potatoes are. If they're smaller ones, sometimes they're done quicker, but normally it's about an hour. And then I just let them cool a little bit. And then I warmed up some of the leftover chili, putting that on. And then I have a little bit of the leftover cheese from the rest of the dishes. And then we've also got some sour cream. So we'll add some of that. If you have some green onions on hand, go ahead and throw that on. Otherwise you don't really need it. And there is our last meal. Baked potato, chili with cheese and salad. I know some people probably don't think that this is a, a meal, but I would eat this for a meal any day of the week. So yeah, chili with baked potatoes and then the salad. I'm gonna put some just like Olive Garden salad dressing on this. And that is our last extreme budget meal. Yum. In today's meals, I'm gonna be focusing on ingredients that you likely already have at your house. And I'm also going to be mentioning substitutions that you can make in case you don't have those ingredients on hand. So first up are some breakfast burritos with fried potatoes. I'm also going to be sharing my very favorite recipe for banana bread, which is super flexible. I also tried out a new recipe for cheeseburger soup. This is probably my favorite recipe out of the bunch and I will definitely be making it over and over again. I also made a really good recipe for meatballs and gravy and we served that with pasta. You could use any type of ground meat for these meatballs and any type of pasta that you have in your pantry. We had that with some frozen mixed vegetables. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna make is some cheeseburger soup. And I actually got the idea for this because I saw some at the grocery store um, that was like pre-prepped in the deli case. It was at Hy-Vee and I purchased it and it was not that great. So you're gonna make it, it wasn't very good. So I'm gonna make my own. Uh, so this is the recipe, cheeseburger soup. It is on the recipecritic.com. So I've got a pound of ground beef in here. I always have ground beef in my freezer. Uh, it calls for one onion. I need to use these shallots up, so I'm gonna use these. I've got some shredded carrots. The recipe also calls for celery, but I don't have any of that, so I'm gonna leave it out. I'm sure you could leave out the carrots too if you don't have those. I've got three potatoes. I always have potatoes in my pantry. And you're gonna need four, about four cups of diced potatoes, so that should be enough. I've got dried parsley, dried basil, some chicken broth, butter, milk, all these things I always keep on hand, flour. Um, I've got some sour cream, and then I'm gonna use a mixture of cheeses. So it calls for either Velveeta or cheddar. I've got a little bit of Velveeta left, and then I'm gonna combine it with some Monterey Jack 
and this cheddar and gruyere and I've got some salt and pepper. I'm also gonna make BLTs which I normally uh, always have the ingredients for. So this is just some bacon that I put on a sheet tray with a uh, cooling rack. I'm gonna bake this at 425 for about 20 minutes. So I've got a Dutch oven here. I've got probably about a couple tablespoons of avocado oil in the bottom of there. I'm gonna go ahead and add my onion and my carrot. So I'm just gonna let these cook for, I don't know, maybe about two or three minutes until they start to get soft. And then I'm gonna add the ground beef. And then while that's working, I'm going to peel my potatoes. I did get this new uh, potato peeler from OXO. I can link it down below. You guys know I love their brand of kitchen items but it was funny because i was looking for a new one i actually had a pampered chef one that just randomly fell apart one day as i was using it and this one had pretty good ratings but then i was like reading the negative ratings and a bunch of them were like three stars this is super sharp and i cut myself which i thought was kind of funny it's like do you want it to be sharp i mean don't cut yourself My ground beef is mostly cooked, or I guess it is cooked rather. So I'm gonna stir in the basil and the oregano. I said oregano, but I meant parsley. <laughs> I'm gonna add my four cups of diced potatoes. I did have to use about five potatoes to get four cups, so I'll just FYI. So I'm going to put in four cups of chicken broth and like I said I always keep this nor um, chicken bouillon on hand. Uh, okay so I'm going to stir this up and then bring it to a boil and uh, cover it and just simmer it until the potatoes are tender. So in this little pot here I just melted the butter and added the flour so this is going to be like the roux that we're going to add to the soup to thicken it. I'm gonna turn this down to low and add the milk. So I added the cheese, uh, Velveeta, cheddar, and some Monterey Jack. So I'm just gonna stir this. I'm gonna turn the heat up so it bubbles a little bit and just stir it until all the cheese melts. I still need to add some salt and pepper, so I'll taste it and add that. Um, and then the last step is just to turn off the heat and stir in some uh, sour cream. This is done. I would not necessarily say it's like the prettiest soup ever, but it tastes <laughs> really, really good. I would highly recommend this recipe using obviously mostly stuff I had in my house. Didn't have to go to the store to get any of this. So I'm just going to serve this with some crackers and a little bit of cheese on top. And I'm going to make some BLTs. So here's dinner. I made some BLTs and I did crumble up a little bit of bacon on the top of the soup. I thought that would be good. Um, I got these soup and sandwich plates. Uh, I ordered them from Sir La Table and they're super cute. I'll link them down below. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna have for dinner cheeseburger soup and some BLT sandwiches. Bon appetit. All right, so one thing I seem to always have in my house is bananas. And whether they are uh, very ripe like these or almost ripe or I always have some in my freezer as well, I seem to always have bananas. And so what's one thing that we can always make? Banana bread. Now, I did try a different recipe for banana bread a few, uh, it was probably about a month back, America's Test Kitchen. If you remember that, we um, made banana juice out of um, microwaving bananas. It was the most bizarre banana bread recipe I've ever made. However, I made it and my family did not care for it. So I'm going back to my tried and true Martha Stewart banana bread recipe. Very simple. 
This is one I've been using for years. In fact, you can see I printed off this one in 2009. So I've <laughs> been using it for, what, over 12 years now. Okay, so here's what you'll need. I have some ripe bananas here. I'm gonna go ahead and double this recipe since I have the ingredients to do so. I'll probably share one of the loaves with Adam's parents. I've got some flour, sugar, you know, baking staples. I always have those on hand. Um, baking soda, salt, vanilla, and I have some butter here. I always keep butter in my freezer as well. Now the recipe calls for sour cream, but I have used both sour cream and yogurt in this particular recipe and it works great. I have this um, yogurt that I got from Aldi. It's just vanilla yogurt. You could use plain yogurt. You could use I mean, I've even used like flavored yogurt in here before if it's all I had and it works fine. Just for one loaf of it, you only need half a cup. So I'm gonna use one cup of this. Since this does have a little bit of sugar in it, I think I'll maybe cut back on um, the actual sugar in the recipe just a little bit, but let me get out my bowl and my mixer. Okay, so for this recipe, it says we need, what's it say? Two cup, well, one cup for one loaf, but I'm doubling it. So two cups of mashed banana. I think I'm gonna put maybe four bananas in here and we'll see how that works. I am probably gonna have extra um, bananas. So what I'll do is I'll slice those up and put them in the freezer and then we just use them in smoothies. And you can either um, mash your bananas with a fork, but I think it's just as easy to mash them with a potato masher, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so that's about two cups. It took five bananas for that. Okay, so in my bowl here, I'm using my stand mixer. I've got my two sticks of butter, and um, I would have needed two cups of sugar, but I just added one and three quarter cups since the yogurt is sweetened, Then I'm just gonna cream this until it's fluffy. I also forgot that you need eggs for this <laughs> recipe. I had them out on the counter, but I forgot to show that. So four eggs total. And then vanilla, we need one teaspoon. So we're gonna add two teaspoons to here. Okay, and then also I added my yogurt. So I'm just gonna mix that in. Okay, so I added my bananas to here. I added three cups of flour, some baking powder or soda, baking soda and some salt and i'm just gonna mix this up slowly i've got two um, loaf pans here i'm gonna use this uh, baker's joy to grease my pans with and then i also like to put a parchment paper sling in the bottom of each one because that um, helps be able to pull the loaf of banana bread out when it's done and then i'm gonna try carefully to put half of the batter in each one as evenly as i can that's as even as I could get it so I'm gonna pop these into the oven I have the oven set at 350 degrees and I'll bake for about an hour all right so here is our banana bread out of the oven I'm just gonna let it cool a little bit more before I um, wrap it up I would just encourage you to take it out of the oven when it still feels like it's not quite done in the middle because otherwise the edges will get um, too brown but this turned out perfect so I'm gonna wrap one up and give to Adam's parents and we'll use the other one for breakfast and snacks throughout the week. Okay, so one of the meals that I always have ingredients for is breakfast burritos. And you can make these for any meal, you don't have to make them for breakfast, but I always have eggs, some kind of cheese, some type of breakfast meat, 
It doesn't necessarily have to be bacon. You could use sausage or ham, or you could leave the meat out altogether. I've also got some leftover um, diced potatoes that I baked the other night, so I'm gonna fry those up, and then I always have flour tortillas. I have my potatoes in this skillet right here. I put a little bit of olive oil and butter. Um, I like to combine the olive oil with the butter because it helps the butter not burn. And then I just season the potatoes with a little bit of salt and pepper. These are obviously already cooked. Um, that's why I kind of always like to make extra baked potatoes when I make them for dinner because then you can dice them up once they're cold and make fried potatoes out of them. And then in this skillet I've got my bacon. So I just took probably, I don't know, eight slices of bacon and chopped it up into small pieces. And I'm just gonna fry these until they are crispy. And then while that is working, I'll work on the eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna take the bacon out and just put it on a plate that I have lined with a paper towel. Okay, so I've got a couple of flour tortillas here and I'm just gonna put some cheese down on the bottom. I'm going to basically seal these up and then heat them up in a pan. And that will um, not only help cook the tortilla, but it also helps like seal the burrito. So I would recommend doing that. You just do it in a dry skillet. I'm gonna put some eggs on here and some of the bacon. And if you have like veggies to use up in your crisper drawer, you can put peppers, mushrooms, whatever you like. And then I'm just gonna fold this up. So yeah, I just have a nonstick skillet here. There's no oil or anything in it and I have it over medium heat. If you put the burritos in there seam side down, then just wait till they get a little golden on the bottom. You can flip them over and you can, um, they'll stay closed that way. So it's kind of a neat trick. All right, so here we go. We've got two breakfast burritos with some um, taco sauce or salsa on the side and fried potatoes. So definitely recommend this if you uh, are looking to use up ingredients in your fridge and or pantry. Like I said, it's super flexible. Any cheese, any meat, any veggies you have on hand, you just need some eggs and some tortillas. Okay, so when I was looking for some recipe ideas to show you guys, um, you know, what to make when you don't have anything <laughs> planned or don't have anything, you know, you feel like you don't have anything to make, I found this meatballs and gravy recipe on Taste of Home. So that's what I'm gonna make tonight. Um, I've made something similar to this before, but not exactly this recipe, but I'm sure it'll be good. So I've got one pound of ground beef that I thawed um, from the freezer. I always have ground beef in the freezer. I've got some milk. I'll need some other other ingredients for um, the meatballs too. I'll get those in a second. Um, I'm gonna serve these with pasta. The reason why I chose this particular meal is again, you can substitute the ground beef for any type of ground meat you know, turkey, chicken, pork, whatever you have on hand. And then obviously whatever pasta you have in your pantry will work with this. I'm gonna use these um, egg noodles. I actually got these on Thrive a long time ago and I just haven't used them yet. Um, they're actually only half a pound in each little box here. So I'm gonna make two of those because my kids love buttered egg noodles. They will eat a lot of those. And then, you know, just serve a veggie on the side or a salad. If you have canned veggies, frozen veggies, I've got this bag of uh, mixed vegetables that I actually got this free um, from Hy-Vee and a deal that I got from them. But that is what I'm gonna make for dinner tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up the meatball mixture in this bowl right here. I've got one egg in here. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of cornstarch, which I've never added that to meatballs before, but hey. Uh, half a cup of milk. I'm adding a little less than that because I am using a little less ground beef than the recipe calls for. The recipe calls for one and a half pounds of ground beef, but I just got a one pound roll, so that'll be fine. That usually makes more than enough meatballs for the four of us. And then instead of like chopped onion, um, like fresh onion. I'm just going to use some minced onion. Um, I don't really prefer like big chunks of 
chopped up onion in my meatballs like at all ever. So I'm gonna use that instead. And then I'm gonna add some pepper, some salt. It calls for nutmeg, allspice, and ginger. I'm a little scared. Maybe I'll add just a tiny pinch of each. Okay, so we've got a big pot of water here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this on high to boil. I did purchase, so you guys know I worked with Mason a lot on my channel, and I've shown their skillets, their like stainless skillets, their nonstick skillets, their knives, etc. Um, over Christmas, I did purchase myself a set of their stainless steel pans, and they're fantastic. I highly recommend them. Um, like I said, this video, this particular video is not sponsored, but I just love their products. So I did get, I think it was like on a deal over the Christmas holiday, but it came with this big pasta pot, which I've really been liking. I didn't really have a pot this particular size. Um, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to make these in a nonstick skillet. So here's the meat mixture. This is kind of interesting because it doesn't have any breadcrumbs or anything in it, but I did go ahead and add some nutmeg allspice and or I'm sorry nutmeg allspice and ginger just a little bit because I don't want it to be too strong but I'm using just like a little um, cookie scoop or a meatball scooper to make my meatballs because the uh, meat mixture since it doesn't have any breadcrumbs in it it's, it's kind of fragile and then I'm just gonna brown these gently um, the recipe said to use four tablespoons of butter I just put one tablespoon in the pan along with a little bit of olive oil because I thought that was a little bit excessive. Um, so I'm just gonna brown these on all sides, remove them to a paper towel lined plate, and then once they're all cooked, we'll make the gravy. Okay, so I've um, browned all my meatballs and I've wiped out my skillet. I added a little bit more butter and some flour. I'm gonna cook this together and then add some beef broth and some half and half. Okay, so I'm gonna add one cup of beef broth. And then the recipe says you can either use half and half or milk, which is nice because you could just use whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna use half and half. And then this will probably thicken pretty quickly. Um, I'm gonna taste it, maybe add some minced parsley and put the meatballs back in. Okay, so these have been simmering, I would say for about, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. Um, smells delicious. I did taste the sauce and I felt like it needed a little extra something, so I added maybe a teaspoon, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. So I'd recommend that if you're gonna make this recipe, but I'm just gonna stick the lid on these. And the veggies are cooking right now. Um, I cooked my pasta. This pasta cooks super quick, like in five minutes or something like that. So I'm gonna drain this, butter it, uh, get the veggies ready, and we can eat. All right, so here is our completed meal. Uh, turned out really good, I highly recommend this. I will definitely be making this recipe again and like I said super versatile for whatever you have on hand kind of a, a Swedish meatball vibe going on here I just sprinkled some um, dried parsley on the top and then we got our veggies on the side Murphy is hungry as well you want to eat <laughs> so in today's video I'm sharing a budget meal prep with you guys because grocery prices are insane and these meals are all going to be chicken, fish, and vegetarian since my last one was beef. We are gonna be prepping some breakfasts, dinners, lunches, snacks, all of the above, all on a $50 budget. Let's go into Walmart and see what we can find. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you guys through the store with me and kind of show you some things that I'm grabbing for this $50 meal prep. I'm gonna grab a dozen eggs. These have gone up in price significantly, and I'll have the prices for you also when I do the grocery haul here in a little bit. I'm also gonna grab some cream cheese. That's $1.48 per block. And then I wanted to get a rotisserie chicken. We're gonna use this for a couple of different Meal, so it will be budget friendly. I'm also going to get some hummus that we're going to use for some snack slash breakfast boxes. I'm getting the roasted red pepper. I'm also going to grab a block of extra sharp cheddar cheese that I'll be shredding up and then some black forest ham. I'm going to use that for breakfast sandwiches and some salads. And then I'm also just grabbing some plain chicken breasts. These are going
going to be for a crock pot chicken chili that is delicious. And then I also need some canned beans and veggies for that particular recipe. So I'm gonna get some dark red kidney beans, some petite diced tomatoes. You could get regular diced tomatoes, but I'm getting petite. And then I also need some canned veggies. So some corn, and then I'm also gonna get some canned green beans for a side as well. And I will have all of these recipes plus the shopping list linked in a printable for you guys down below. Long grain rice is always a budget staple, so I'm gonna grab a bag of that. And then I also need some mayo for a few different recipes. I'm gonna be making chicken salad, so I obviously need mayo for that. I'm grabbing a bag of frozen tilapia. We are gonna make some fish cakes with that. And then for some extra flavor for several of the recipes, I'm gonna get some green onions. Those are 88 cents per bunch. And then I also need some carrots for my snack boxes with the hummus and then for another soup recipe I'm making. I tried to get just a single head of romaine but they were out so I grabbed the three pack and then I also need some green grapes for my chicken salad, tomato for my lettuce salad and then I'm also going to grab a couple lemons for a couple different recipes. Those add a lot of flavor for not a lot of cost and then I am going to get some croissants. Those are going to be for chicken salad and some breakfast sandwiches and my toast total was $54.56. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna put together is this slow cooker chicken chili. This is actually a recipe out of my cookbook, the Essential Pantry Cookbook, which has a lot of great ideas for like using up pantry staples, and a lot of them are budget friendly as well. I'll link this down below, and then I'll also have this particular recipe linked down below as well. And since this is a meal prep video, I'm gonna show you how I would meal prep this, but I'm actually gonna put it all together in the crock pot right now so instead of putting it all in the crock pot if you wanted to prep this ahead of time and either put it in the freezer or just keep it in the fridge you can combine all of your ingredients together except the shredded cheese and the toppings in a gallon ziploc bag this is a reusable one and then like i said you can either stick it in the freezer or the fridge and then all you have to do when you want to make it dump it in the crock pot or sometimes what i do too if i want to prep stuff like this is i actually just put it in the crock and then i take this the whole crock out and i put it in my garage refrigerator that way all you have to do when you're ready to cook it is take it put it in the slow cooker and turn it on Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do is put your chicken in the slow cooker and you need either three smaller chicken breasts or two large chicken breasts will work and then I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle my seasonings over so this is a mixture of chili powder cumin salt pepper and dill weed which the dill sounds kind of weird in this but just trust me it gives it like a ranch flavor which is really really good so highly recommend that and then I always keep chicken bouillon on hand because it's a lot easier than keeping like huge cans and boxes of chicken stock. So this is what I use. I always consider it just a pantry staple because I always have it in my spice cabinet. So I'll put that in there. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of hot sauce. You could use sriracha. I'm using Frank's Red Hot. You can add more or less if you'd like to as well. Okay, so next I've got some garlic. I have garlic on hand. I always do. And so I'm going to go ahead and add that. However, if you don't, you can always add garlic powder. It's going to be just as good. I would use probably about two teaspoons of garlic powder, maybe. Obviously, I did not include that in my groceries from Walmart. But like I said, definitely just use garlic powder if that's what you have on hand. Okay, next I'm gonna add one can of petite diced tomatoes, one can of corn, don't drain it. And then I did go ahead and rinse and drain my beans, I'm gonna add those. Okay, and then lastly, you just wanna put your cream cheese, kind of just set it on the top there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. I'm going to cook this on high for four hours, but if you wanna do it all day, you could also do it on low for eight hours. The cream cheese will melt, and then we'll kind of combine everything once it's cooked, and we'll shred the chicken. This recipe is so good. It's a total crowd pleaser, and every time anyone asks me, what's your favorite meal in the cookbook, I always say this one because it is so delicious. Okay, so our fiesta chicken chili is almost complete. If you use a whisk and you just be patient, you can work the cream cheese. Obviously, it's melted back into the soup. And then this is the chicken that I pulled out, so you can see that it shreds like super easily. So I'm just going to shred this 
and add it back into the crock pot and then we will shred up some cheese and add that as well. So to finish this chicken chili, we're gonna add a cup of shredded cheddar and just stir that around until it melts in and that is done. Now, I normally do taste it, obviously, at the end to make sure that there's nothing that it needs, to make sure it has, you know, enough salt, enough pepper, chili powder, whatever, but that's it. Super simple. And like I said, it's really easy to prep ahead also if you wanna do a freezer meal. Okay, so here is our cheesy chicken chili from the crock pot. I'm like shooting some photos for my vlog, so that's why I have this on a little table here with some garnishes and a towel. But yeah, it turned out super good, really delicious. You're definitely gonna have leftovers, so you'll also have, you know, some leftover to take to work too. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's delicious. Yum. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make the chicken salad out of this rotisserie chicken. So I'm gonna shred or cut this up. I've got my lettuce here, grapes, I need to wash those. Got my mayo, the juice of one lemon. I'm also gonna put some green onions in there, salt, pepper, some dill weed. And then I like to balance out the lemon juice in the dressing for the chicken salad with just a little bit of brown sugar. You could also use honey. It's actually, I learned that from the Pioneer Woman, her recipe for chicken chicken salad. Okay, so for the green onions, I separated these from the greens and the whites, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the very ends of the whites, and then these are gonna go in the pot with my chicken. So I put the remainder of the rotisserie chicken in here and my onions. I'm probably gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna fill this up with, well, not fill it up all the way, probably up to like here, with like cold water, and then bring it to the boil and simmer it for, I don't know, probably about an hour. We'll pick off the rest of the meat and strain the stock, and then this is what we'll make the chicken rice soup with. Okay, I'm gonna add a bay leaf to this, and I'm just gonna add some peppercorns. And then, I don't know, maybe add a teaspoon of salt, we can always add more. Okay, if you have celery on hand, you can add celery to this. I'm gonna wait and put the carrots in after we do the stock. Garlic, you can put garlic in. So anyway, I'm gonna find the lid, where's my lid? Oh, here. Okay, so before I squeeze the lemon for the chicken salad, I'm gonna go ahead and zest it because I wanna use this in the rice that I'm gonna make with the fish cakes. Okay, so I've got a bowl here. I'm gonna go ahead and make my dressing. So I need about, I don't know, maybe two thirds of a cup of sour cream. I'm gonna add our lemon juice. That was kind of a lot of, of lemon juice. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna add maybe about a tablespoon of brown sugar. Okay, I'm gonna add some dill, dried dill, pepper, maybe about, I don't know, quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, and then we're gonna add some green onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chopped up chicken. I mostly just used the breast meat. It actually gave me a lot more chicken than I thought <laughs> it was going to. And then, I don't know, on the grapes, I'm just gonna use a handful, maybe a quarter of a cup. Okay, so I am going to save one of these heads of romaine for the chicken salad sandwiches, but then the others I'm gonna cut up for chef salad. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how I portioned out the chicken salad. Hello. 
for meal prep. So I've got two of these divided glass containers with chicken salad in one section, some lettuce and some or two of the mini croissants. So the idea is that you kind of build it on your own when you're ready to eat so it doesn't get soggy. And then for the other two croissants, I just have those in little baggies and then I have the chicken salad separate with the lettuce. So my thought also was that maybe for these two, you could also eat it on lettuce leaves or you know, you could also just eat it with crackers or by itself. But yeah, the chicken salad turned out really good and I'm glad I made it because I haven't made it in a long time. Okay, so for the eggs, I'm gonna actually hard boil six of them and then the other six we're gonna cook up for the breakfast sandwiches with the croissants. So I have washed and spinned my lettuce dry and I think I'm gonna have enough for four salads. So these are disposable salad containers. I got them on Amazon so I can link them down below. I've had these for a long time so I don't use them a ton. I'm trying to use them more just so I can make more space in my pantry. But even though they're disposable, the plastic is recyclable, so you can still recycle them. And then for the rest of the lettuce, I'm gonna wash it like in whole leaves because we're gonna use most of that for the sandwiches. So um, these are the rest of my green onions that I had left over from the chicken salad and everything. So I am gonna divide some of these between the salads. I'm probably gonna use some of them for the fish cakes. And then I may also mix in some of these with the eggs when I do the breakfast sandwiches. I think that would be like a nice flavor in with that. So we'll see. Okay, so for the tomato, we don't need it for anything else, just the salads. So I think I'm gonna cut this into like wedges. If I cut it up too small, they'll get kind of watery in the fridge and then it'll make the lettuce soggy. So just want to avoid that. My hard boiled eggs are done. So I've got a bowl of ice here. I'm just gonna place the eggs on top of that and then I'll fill this up with cold water and let them sit in there until they are completely cool. Okay, so for the rest of the ham, I'm just gonna cut this up into bite-sized pieces and we're putting it in with our salad. So it's gonna be kind of like a cob salad situation. Fun fact, Adam does not like cold grilled chicken. So if I ever make him salads for work, he doesn't want cold grilled chicken on them. He'd rather have like ham and turkey or like, you know, some type of like cob salad <laughs> deal. Not cold grilled turkey or grilled chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel my hard boiled eggs. I have this little egg cracker contraption. I was actually very skeptical of it, but it does honestly help peel the eggs a lot easier, especially if you're boiling like newer eggs like I had to do today. Okay, so full transparency, I was gonna make homemade ranch dressing, which I totally could have made because I have some mayo left. However, it is starting to get later in the day here and I don't really wanna be a hero, so you know what? We're getting out the old Hidden Valley Ranch and I'm just gonna portion this out into some containers and I'll show you the salad prepped. As Connor would say, gotta have the ranch from the valley. All right, here we go. We got four salads prepped. So my idea with these was to have them for lunch with a little bit of the chicken rice soup, which I still need to show you guys. Although I think this could definitely stand on its own. As a meal, just depends kind of how much you want to eat. Either way, these are a delicious way to do meal prep. And this is the kind of salad that I make that makes me like excited to eat the lunch that I prepped. You know, because one thing about meal prepping is it's only helpful if you actually eat the food that you prepped. So I'm gonna get lids on these and I'll show you the soup. Okay, I've got a bowl here and I'm gonna go ahead and crack six of my eggs in there. I'm gonna splash a little bit of milk in there, but you could also use water or half and half cream, whatever you have on hand. And then I'm gonna add, I don't know, probably a little more than a tablespoon of the green onions. And then I have some everything seasoning. This is what it looks like. It's just like salt, pepper, garlic. I'm gonna add some of that. Okay, and then give these a whisk. 
I've got a nonstick skillet here with just a little bit of butter in the bottom and I'm gonna put in my eggs. Okay, so I was trying to cook this all in one piece so I could like cut the eggs apart and put them on the sandwich. I don't think that's gonna happen, so I'm just gonna cut it in half and flip it. All right, we're not gonna win a beauty contest with these eggs, but it's fine. It's still gonna taste good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the heat off because they're gonna continue to cook and they're almost done on the other side anyway. Okay, let's assemble some breakfast sandwiches. So the croissants, you do have to, to cut them, unfortunately, but that's fine. We'll survive. Now, I do wanna say, these croissants are obviously kind of small, so you probably wanna eat two for breakfast, me, I'd probably eat one and then add like a banana or, or an apple or something like that. But if Adam eats these this week, he'll probably eat two per serving. They do have larger croissants at Walmart, but I was obviously on a budget. So these are cheaper. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna kind of put the egg and I don't know, a couple slices of ham on each one and then I'll cut a piece of cheese and add that on the top. Since these are small, I'm not gonna individually wrap them. Basically, all you have to do is heat this up in the microwave for, I don't know, maybe like 30, 45 seconds and you got breakfast. All right, so here's the breakfast sandwiches. I'm gonna put the lid on these and put them in the refrigerator. Yum, those turned out really, really good looking. I'm sure they taste good too. <laughs> Okay, so this is what the chicken stock is gonna look like once it is boiled for about an hour, or simmered rather. I do think that making stock with an already roasted chicken does make kind of a richer broth, but you can do it with a regular chicken as well. So anyway, I'm gonna strain this out into a container and then then we'll be ready to start on the soup. Okay, so this is how much chicken I got after I picked it all off of the bones, after I simmered it. Probably about a cup and a half, which will be fine for our soup. You don't need a ton of meat, I guess you would say, <laughs> in a soup like this, because it's there's gonna be rice and stuff in here. So right now I'm just cutting up my carrots. If I had to guess, I don't know, I'm probably gonna use about a third of this bag of carrots. And then I'm gonna use the others for the snack boxes and the salads. And I've got my pot over there with a little bit of butter melting so I can saute these. Okay, so I've also rinsed my rice. I just do that so it doesn't get so starchy. I'm gonna use one cup of it for the soup and then the other for the fish cake meal. So. I'm just gonna stir this around a little bit. I don't really care about toasting the rice too much. I just wanna kind of make sure it's dried off and get some flavor on it. And then I'm gonna put the chicken broth back in. All right, so here is our completed chicken rice soup. I am gonna portion this out for lunches this week. I did have to add some extra seasoning to it once I cooked it, but if you guys haven't had chicken rice soup in a while, like how comforting is it? Come on. It's delicious. Okay, so there is a lemon in here and I was gonna tell you about that. So what I did with one of the lemons that I squeezed out for another recipe is I picked the seeds out of it and I just threw it in here because I do think that adding a little bit of lemon juice and lemon flavor kind of like brightens up the flavor of the soup. But this turned out super good and I'm also gonna be excited to have this for lunch or for dinners or whatever. You could also, you know, make this for dinner. It's a super budget-friendly dinner meal. On the side, you could make some focaccia. I actually have a recipe for that in my cookbook that is super like foolproof and easy and it would be just an awesome, simple, like delicious supper but still like super budget friendly. All right, so here's what we have left to make our snack boxes. So I've got some hummus, sliced up the cucumbers, we've got some carrots, some grapes left, and a few hard boiled eggs. Okay. 
Okay, so these turned out really good. So I've got four kind of snack boxes here. I don't know, I feel like like the ones with hard boiled eggs, like I would eat those for breakfast. I normally eat breakfast late in the morning anyway. In this one, we've got cucumbers, carrots, grapes, and then this is roasted red pepper hummus that I got from Walmart, it's really good. Same thing in this one, except no grapes and half a hard boiled egg. Whole hard boiled egg in this one with grapes and hummus and veggies. This one could probably be a light lunch too. Actually pair this with some of that chicken rice soup. Bam, you have a good lunch. And this one is the same as that one over there. This container is OXO. I can link these down below. This one's Rubbermaid. These two are Rubbermaid also. So yeah, yum. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and prep the tilapia for the fish cakes. And I'm cooking these kind of recipes or meals to completion because obviously I wanna show you guys how they turn out, but I'm gonna explain to you how you could prep this ahead of time if you really did wanna meal prep it. So I'm gonna season these with this anti no nos seafood seasoning. It's really good. You could also use bay. You could use salt and pepper. I like to use some type of a seafood seasoning on these. And I did drizzle just a little bit of oil on there because I just want to make sure that they don't stick to the baking sheet. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can bake the fish and just go ahead and refrigerate it. And then that way, like when you're ready to make this meal, all you have to do is shred it up and you know mix it with the ingredients and make your fish cakes. Or you could also make the entire fish cake recipe ahead of time. I got a little bit much on that and then just crisp them up in a pan whenever you wanna make them. So a couple different ways you could do that. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven. These are pretty small and thin. I have my oven set at 400, so I'm gonna cook these for, I'm gonna do eight minutes and see if they're cooked. It might take up to 10 minutes, but if you have larger fish fillets, you can cook it for longer. You can do this with cod, basically any type of white fish. You can also do it with salmon. Okay, so along with the fish cakes, I'm gonna make some Instant Pot rice. So I've got a couple tablespoons of butter in the bottom of the Instant Pot. You could also use olive oil, and I'm gonna put a cup and a half of rice in. That's the remainder of the rice from that one pound bag. Okay, and then I'm gonna put in one and a half teaspoons of dried basil and three quarters of a teaspoon of, you could use garlic salt or seasoned salt or just regular salt. I'm using this seasoning blend. And we do wanna toast this rice just a little bit before we put the liquid in. You can add water at this step, but I have some of the chicken broth that we made left over, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I'm also gonna add the lemon zest, and then I also juiced half of the other lemon. I'm gonna add that as well. This is like a lemon kind of rice. I was gonna say rice pilaf, but it's not really rice pilaf. Okay, and then this just has to cook on high pressure for six minutes. This is one of my newer Instant Pots, and sometimes I forget how to use the buttons. All right, and then we'll let it do a natural pressure release, which just means that we'll let it sit until the pressure valve on the top drops down. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the fish cakes. You can see that after my tilapia was done, I went ahead and put it in a bowl here to cool, and I'm just gonna use this little fork tool, which I can link it down below. I got it on Amazon, I really love it, to kind of break the fish. You just wanna make sure that there's not any like super large pieces. We're gonna mix breadcrumbs in here, some mayo. I know mayo sounds weird, but keep in mind all mayo is, is really just eggs and a little bit of oil. So it helps bind it with the breadcrumbs. You could also use a beaten egg if you don't wanna use mayo. And we've already, you know, seasoned this fish pretty well. So just keep that in mind when you make the fish cake mixture. You don't wanna add you know, too, too much more salt. And I've seen people do this with tuna before also. Obviously it's already cooked, <laughs> you know, so you wouldn't have to flake it, you know, cook it and flake it, unless you were using like, you know, tuna steaks. Okay, this is the remainder of the green onions. So I'm gonna add those. We'll do about, I think that's probably about a quarter cup of mayo. Breadcrumbs, I normally don't measure this. Like I said, I'll leave measurements down below, but especially recipes like this, you really kind of have to cook a little bit by feel. I'm gonna add some seafood seasoning just a little bit because it depends a lot on like how dry your fish is, how much fish you have. The amount of fish that you have may not be the exact same as the amount the recipe was tested with. And so I always just say, if you make a recipe and it's not quite turning out like you think it should, just 
improvise to, you know, add more or less, whatever you would like. You want it to be like cohesive enough where it can like form together into a little cake because we're gonna fry them up in a skillet. Feels like pretty good to me. They are, you know, a little bit delicate. I think that's it. I'm gonna let this sit for a second and let the breadcrumbs kind of absorb some of that moisture while I heat up the oil. Okay, I've got a pan here. I'm gonna drain some of the liquid off these green beans. And then we'll add these. And then I like to just add some butter and then I season it. And I just reheat these like over medium heat for about five minutes. And I know it's canned green beans, but everyone loves them. All right, so I've got my oil heating up here. I'm just using vegetable oil, but you could use avocado oil or canola oil. You could use olive oil. I normally don't like to use olive oil to shallow fry things in because it can brown a little bit too quickly. I just try to make them like a little bit bigger than a golf ball and then flatten it out. My kids love these, and if your kids are like scared of fish, then as some kids are, Definitely try these out. They're very like mild in flavor and I just feel like it's a really kid friendly thing. But And I'm probably going to get about eight out of this batch. And since these are already cooked, you're basically just browning them on one side and getting them crispy. So after this, I'll wash my hands and we'll get a paper towel lined plate to put them on when they're done. Okay, so these are, I will say, like a little bit hard to flip. If you have like a tiny little spatula, <laughs> that works the best. I will say that I normally don't put as much oil as I did today when I fry these. I normally just put like a small, tiny like layer of oil on the bottom. But I, <laughs> I kind of went overboard because I had like just enough oil left in the bottle of vegetable oil and I was like, oh, I'll just use the whole thing so I can get rid of the bottle. Okay, so here is our rice from the Instant Pot. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir. It smells so good. I love that lemon juice in there. And the other reason why I like making rice in the Instant Pot is because it has a keep warm function, so you can keep warm in here. Okay, so here's what these look like when they're done. You definitely wanna drain them on paper towels because they will be a little bit oily. Now I've got my rice, okay, I've got my green beans. All right, so here we go. Budget dinner, we've got our fish cakes, Lemon rice, green beans, super not fancy, <laughs> still delicious. I have a little bit of everything aioli in the fridge and that's what I'm gonna eat with the fish cakes. But sometimes my kids eat them with ketchup. I don't know, fish sticks, ketchup, you know, or you could use tartar sauce. So in today's video, we're gonna be making a bunch of awesome recipes. I'm going to be sharing a recipe for a delicious smoked mozzarella pasta salad, some pumpkin cupcakes with cream cheese frosting that only take three ingredients. Yes, three ingredients. I'm also going to be making some homemade granola. If you've never done that before, it's super simple and delicious and honestly a lot cheaper than what you can get in the store. We are also making breakfast sandwiches and last but not least a lunch meal prep turkey burgers with a goat cheese and arugula salad super excited to eat this one okay so this meal prep was actually really inspired by what i got in my misfits market box this week so i've got some arugula walnuts some cherry tomatoes olive oil some ricotta cheese ground turkey uh, goat cheese and then some dill and some microgreens so what i'm planning to do is make a bunless turkey burger with a salad with arugula, microgreens, dill, goat cheese, walnuts, and tomatoes. And I actually saw a recipe one time where they added ricotta to turkey burgers in order to keep them moist. So we'll see how well it works. Okay, so I am washing my greens, the arugula, and the microgreens, and the dill. I've got a nonstick skillet here that I'm gonna cook my turkey burgers in, but I just wanna add a tiny bit of olive oil to make sure they don't stick. Okay, so in this bowl, I've got my ground turkey, a couple spoonfuls of ricotta, I don't know, maybe two to three tablespoons, some chopped dill, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and then I've got my pan preheating here. So I'm just gonna mix this up, form it into three patties and cook them until it's cooked through. All right, so my turkey burgers are cooled down. I made like four and one was little and I just ate it and it was really good. Highly recommend that mixture. So I've got some meal prep containers here with the arugula sprouts and dill and some tomatoes. 
I've been toasting up some walnuts. So I'm gonna add those to the salad and then I just grab the goat cheese. All right, so I am eating one of these completed salads right now for lunch and then I'm going to prep the other two. So we've got our greens in there, turkey burger that I cut up, goat cheese, walnuts, fe uh, no, not feta, <laughs> tomatoes, but this is delightful, but I hope you guys try some rendition of it. Okay, so we are gonna make some pumpkin cupcakes with cream cheese frosting, and these are just 24 cents per cupcake. So all you need for this recipe is one box of cake mix and one can of pumpkin. And I remember this from back in the day, I feel like it was like a Weight Watchers hack or something, but you can use any flavor of cake mix. This is really good with like a spice cakes, spice cake mix obviously I'm using pumpkin but I've even done this with a chocolate cake mix before and you can't even tell um, the I mean you can't even taste the pumpkin in it obviously this is gonna taste like pumpkin because it's a pumpkin cake mix but I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up like I normally would and then you don't need the water you don't need the oil you don't need the eggs none of that I know it sounds weird but it really works all right so here's the completed batter I just went ahead and mix this up like I normally would whip it up for you know about two minutes until it gets nice and fluffy i'm going to fill up these um, muffin tins that i lined with some orange liners okay so i'm gonna go ahead and put these in the oven 350 degrees for i don't know we'll start with like 14 minutes i never get the full 24 cupcakes that i'm supposed to get no matter how many times i try i always get less <laughs> I'm probably overfilling them, but whatever. Okay, so my cupcakes are done. They ended up cooking for about 18, 19 minutes. So I've let them cool in the pan for about five minutes. I'm just gonna take them out and let them cool the rest of the way on a baking rack. All right, so our cupcakes are cooled and I started frosting them. I love that I was able to get this cream cheese frosting from Misfits Market, super convenient. Obviously you can make your own cream cheese frosting, but this is honestly almost just as good and super easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and frost the rest of these and get them stored. I'm actually gonna be delivering these to a neighbor um, later on tonight that requested some baked goods for a uh, funeral visitation. So I thought I would help out with that. But yes, they turned out really, really good. So recommend this recipe, especially if you're looking for a cake mix or cupcakes or a snack mix a snack mix a snack cake <laughs> that has a little bit less calories than traditional all right so next up we're gonna prep some smoked mozzarella pasta salad if you guys have never had this before it's actually a pasta salad from a very expensive specialty food store but it's really easy to recreate at home and it only comes out to a dollar 93 per serving which is way cheaper than you can buy it at uh, in the specialty food store. So I'm gonna be using half a pound of penne, some mayo, I've got two cups of spinach leaves, some white wine vinegar, a pinch of cayenne, uh, Parmesan cheese, some garlic and parsley. The recipe calls for smoked mozzarella, but I prefer to use smoked gouda and then some roasted red peppers. To my boiling salted water, I'm gonna add half a pound of penne. I don't think I mentioned that I also have a pinch of cayenne pepper, but I do. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my dressing up in the bottom of this bowl. The penne is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this with cold water. All right, so I mixed up my dressing and I've got the roasted red peppers in there and the cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and add the penne and mix that up as well as the spinach. All right, so here's our completed, I guess it's a copycat smoked mozzarella. <laughs> pasta salad with smoked gouda. This is one batch of the recipe, which I'll have posted down below. I would say this makes six servings, obviously less if you wanna eat it as a main dish. You could add chicken to it, it would be really good too, but we're just gonna use this for lunches for the week. I really can't recommend this recipe enough. It is delightful and I hope you guys make it. Next up, we're gonna do some breakfast sandwiches. So I've got some of the Dave's Killer Bread English Muffins. These are super good. Some ham sharp cheddar cheese. Um, I'm gonna make six sandwiches, but I wanted to make sure I had enough eggs, so I've got eight eggs, 
And then I always like to season, well, flavor, I guess, <laughs> my eggs with a little bit of Dijon mustard, and then I'll use salt and pepper, obviously. Uh, the total for each English muffin sandwich is $2.54. So a lot of times when I'm batch prepping eggs for breakfast sandwiches, I like to uh, bake them in the oven in a dish because then I can cut them into squares or rectangles and it's just a lot easier that way. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of salt. I put probably about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and then I don't know, half a teaspoon of black pepper. I give this a whisk. I've got a baking dish here. This is a rectangular baking dish and this is smaller than a nine by 13. Um, if I had to guess, I'd probably say, I don't know, eight by 10 maybe. Uh, so I put my eggs in there and next, I'm going to use this sharp cheddar cheese that I got from Misfits Market. I'm just going to use about half of the bag. This is sharp cheddar cheese, and there's one and a half cups in here, so I think that'll be fine. This cheese is really good. It's like thick shredded sharp cheddar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven. I have my oven preheated to 375. I would say this will probably take about 12 to 15 minutes. We'll check it and see. We just need it cooked through. Okay, so here are my eggs after they baked in the oven. You can actually see that they're ready to come out of the pan very easily. What I normally do is obviously I'll cut this into six pieces because we have six English muffins, and if you use a rectangular pan like this, it comes out pretty evenly. Just like that. Ta da! And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, toast my English muffins. You don't necessarily have to do this, although I recommend it because they do taste better that way. Even though you are gonna end up heating these up, I don't know, I just think it makes for a better texture. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my breakfast sandwiches. So I have some sheets of foil that I'm gonna wrap these in. Now these are obviously super easy to put together because the cheese is already in the egg. So that makes it super simple. And then I'm just gonna take one of these pieces of ham, fold it in half, top it with the lid, the lid, whatever, the top, and boom. You got yourself a nice ham, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwich. So. You can wrap these in foil or parchment. Obviously, if you want to heat them up in the microwave, you have to remove the foil and wrap them in a paper towel or something like that. But sometimes when I wrap these in foil, I actually like to heat them up in the air fryer. Um, that does a great job. So let me just assemble the rest of these. Hello, sir. Goodbye. Little puppy, and he likes food. <laughs> so here are our prepared ham and cheese and egg breakfast sandwiches. They look delicious. I'm gonna wrap these up in foil and get them in the fridge. All right, so we're gonna make some homemade granola. It's been a long time since I've made granola, so I'm excited to have this for my yogurt for breakfast throughout the week. I've got two cups of rolled oats, some of the Misfits Market odds and ends, creamy almond butter, some walnut pieces, dried cranberries, uh, a quarter cup of maple syrup, some salt, cinnamon, some flaked coconut, that's optional, and three tablespoons of melted butter. Okay, so I totally forgot to mention the cost for this. It's $1.18 per serving. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the wet ingredients together first. Okay, so we're gonna add our oats, coconut, about a half a cup of walnuts. We're not gonna add the dried cranberries until this is already cooked because they'll get pretty gooey in the oven. So I'm gonna mix this up and then I'm gonna grab my baking sheet that I lined with parchment paper. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my granola mixture onto the parchment paper. What you wanna do if you want those like crispy clumps is to kind of press this into like a patty or a cake, patty cake. <laughs> and this is gonna encourage uh, you know, clumping. 
so that you get those nice crunchy pieces of granola. So it looks okay. I've got the oven preheated to 300 degrees. I'm gonna pop this in there for 15 minutes, stir it up, break it apart a little bit, and bake it for 15 more minutes. Okay, so we're at the halfway point of the granola here. I'm just gonna kind of break this into larger pieces like this. And then I'm gonna pop it back in the oven for 15 minutes, but I'm gonna rotate the pan. All right, so here's our granola out of the oven. So when you make granola, it's really important to let it cool um, before you break it apart or try to store it. The cooling process is what helps make it crispy. And I did taste a little bit of this, it's delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack this up into a container. If you've never made homemade granola before, I really encourage you to try it. It's super easy and it always comes out great. And obviously you can add any mix-ins. In fact, I need to add my <laughs> dried cranberries to this. Uh, but yeah, I'll have this recipe down below. So I've got my $20 and I've mapped out the three healthy dinners that I'm gonna make with just $20. I'm gonna be using some pantry staples, just things that would be common in a home kitchen. So I ended up spending $18.94 at Walmart, which was like a dollar <laughs> under budget. So how awesome is that? Let me show you what I got. So I got one loaf of wheat bread. That's gonna be for the tuna melts. I got some cilantro. The cilantro was looking a little... Uh, I don't know, worse for the wear today. So I tried to pick the best one that I could. That's gonna be for several different recipes. I got a zucchini for the vegetarian enchiladas, a couple jalapenos, three Roma tomatoes for the tuna melts, a green pepper for the black bean soup, some russet potatoes. I got an onion, a bulb of garlic, one lime, a package of white corn tortillas. I got some sharp cheddar cheese, and this is gonna be for the tuna melts and the uh, vegetable enchiladas, and then we also have some sour cream. We got some diced tomatoes for the salsa that we're gonna make, and then some uh, great value brand Rotel, some black beans. We're gonna cook these up first because those will take the longest, and we'll use them for several of the recipes, and then three cans of tuna for the tuna melts. So I'm going to go ahead and cook the black beans in the instant pot because you don't have to pre-soak them. You can obviously cook them on the stove top too if you want to, but I've got my black beans in here. Basically, I rinsed these and picked through them just to take out any dirt or stones or cracked beans. And then I'm going to go ahead and add three cups of water. We're going to add half of our green pepper, a quarter of the red onion, two cloves of garlic. I'm going to add two bay leaves, one teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm going to give this a stir just to make sure that the salt is distributed. And then we'll cook this on high pressure for 35 minutes. The great thing about cooking beans in the Instant Pot is that you don't have to pre-soak them. So typically when you cook a pound of beans that are dry, it will make about six cups. Um, which is about what these black beans made. So each one of these containers is four cups. So I went ahead and split it into half, three cups in this, which will be for the black bean soup, three cups in this, which will be for the enchiladas. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make one of the best salsas that you will ever taste. And bonus, it's super simple and super cheap. I'm gonna make mine in the food processor, but if you don't have a food processor, you can also use a blender. So in this bowl, I've got some cilantro, onion, garlic, uh, and jalapeno, and I'm gonna put that in there first and just give it a pulse to kind of grind that part up a little bit. And then you're gonna add in one can of diced tomatoes. Don't drain it. You can also double this also if you want to. I'm gonna add the juice of half of a lime. And then in this bowl, I've got salt, pepper, and cumin, and that's it. So I'm just gonna pulse this again until it all comes together. You don't want to puree it. Um, it's not gonna be like a salsa that way. It's gonna be more of like a picante or a taco sauce, but if that's what you prefer, you can do that as well. That's it. It's really that simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape down the sides. I will taste this for seasoning. Sometimes it needs a little bit more salt. Sometimes if it's like acidy, I will put a small, like a quarter teaspoon of sugar in there. So just adjust the seasonings how you'd like. And this is better after it sits in the fridge a couple hours, so you can definitely make this ahead of time. I can't remember how big of a container this is. I wanna say it's either one and a half or two cups, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the salsa in the refrigerator and then it will be ready for our chips when we make our black bean soup. So 
we're making black bean vegetarian enchiladas. In this skillet, I have a bit of the red onion that I diced up. I also added one tablespoon of olive oil just to saute everything. I added three cloves of garlic that I minced and uh, the rest of the jalapeno. And then I also diced up one zucchini. I just washed it, I did not peel it. And this is gonna be the start for our enchilada filling. I'm also gonna add the can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. I'm gonna add about two cups of the black beans that I cooked. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of cumin half a teaspoon of chili powder, and one quarter cup of diced cilantro, minced cilantro, I guess. I'm gonna season this with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna add just about a quarter cup of water and then give this a stir. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this and let it simmer, I don't know, probably for about 10 to 15 minutes until the zucchini is tender. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a really simple red enchilada sauce with stuff you just have in your pantry. So in this saucepan, I just have two tablespoons of olive oil. This is heating up over about medium heat. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of flour to make a roux, and this will thicken the enchilada sauce. We're gonna give that a whisk. Okay, so we're gonna add one tablespoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. half a teaspoon of cumin, and then I'm gonna whisk in two cups of water. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of this chicken bouillon to the sauce. Now, if you wanna keep this truly vegetarian, you can leave it out uh, and just use salt, or you could use some of the vegetable stock uh, base if you have that as well. Okay, I'm just gonna let this heat up until it comes to a simmer and then we'll give it a taste to see if it needs any salt or any other seasonings. Here's how that black bean filling looks. It thickened up really nicely, so I'm gonna let it cool, uh, give it a taste and see if it needs any other seasoning. So to finish the enchilada sauce, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and then I'm gonna we're gonna take our sour cream and we're gonna add two tablespoons of that and just whisk it in. Make sure you whisk it quickly with the heat off so it doesn't curdle. I've got a nine by 13 dish here. This is what I'm gonna bake the enchiladas in and I'm just gonna use a little bit of spray or cooking spray in the bottom of it. And then we wanna add uh, a little bit of enchilada sauce to the bottom of the pan and that's just gonna help keep the enchiladas from sticking. For the tortillas, um, we're gonna use corn tortillas and really, I guess one of the traditional ways you can do this is to fry these in a little bit of canola oil before you stuff them, but that is gonna add a lot of fat and calories and we're trying to keep this a little bit healthier. So the other option is to get some wet paper towels and then wrap a stack of corn tortillas in them and then just stick it in the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds. And that will keep them moist and soft and pliable so we can roll them with the filling. I'm starting out with eight tortillas just to kind of gauge how much filling I have. I'll probably be able to make more than that, but you just wanna put, I don't know, I'd say maybe a quarter cup of the black bean filling and then roll up the tortilla and then go ahead and place it seam side down into the dish. I was thinking that I'll probably have 12 total, so four people, three enchiladas each. I think that's a pretty good serving. Now when I put these in the dish, when I make enchiladas, I try to put them a, a little bit apart in the pan, and that's just so I can kind of get a spatula in between there and uh, they're easier to get out that way. Okay, so I was able to get 12 enchiladas out of that. I kind of just fit them <laughs> into the pan as I could. Now I'm gonna take the rest of the sauce and pour it over the top. Okay, so I've got four ounces of our cheese that I shredded up. I'm just gonna add that to the top here. And then we're gonna cover this with foil. I have the oven set to 400 degrees and we'll bake this for, I don't know, probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Here are the vegetarian black bean enchiladas. These are so good. 
I snuck a bite off the end of one. Although it is very difficult to get like good plating pictures <laughs> of enchiladas. But um, I topped it with a couple tablespoons of the sour cream and some extra cilantro. Per three enchiladas, it's only 520 calories with 20 grams of protein and 13 grams of fiber. So pretty healthy, I would say. Okay, so for our next meal, we are gonna make tuna melts with potato wedges. So I've got my two large potatoes here. I just cut these into thin wedges and I put them on a baking sheet, sprayed them with some cooking spray. This is avocado oil cooking spray that I always have on hand, or you could use whatever oil you have on hand. And then I season these with some seasoned salt. You could use salt and pepper, whatever you have. Uh, make sure that you put these one flat side down on the tray, and then we'll flip them halfway through. It helps make them super crispy. So I'm gonna put these in the oven 400 degrees for, I don't know, probably about 20 to 30 minutes total. We'll flip them halfway through. Uh -oh. So against my better judgment, I did not put these on parchment paper. So as you can see, some of them stuck a little bit, but actually it makes for these little crispy bits. So, you know, not all is lost, but definitely use a better nonstick pan than I did, or well, I thought this was nonstick, <laughs> or use parchment paper. Okay, so for the tuna melts, we're gonna make some tuna salad. So I've got my three cans of tuna in here that I drained. I like to use a strainer to drain it just to make sure that I get all of the liquid out. I've got a quarter cup of mayo in there. And then I just took a tiny little bit of the red onion, minced it up and put that in there as well. I just wanted a little bit of the flavor, but I don't want it to be too overwhelming. And then I'm just gonna put a half a teaspoon of red wine vinegar, some salt and pepper, and then we'll mix this up and stick it in the fridge and let it sit for a bit before we use it. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble our tuna melts. Obviously you can do these traditionally kind of like a grilled cheese and then you would put the tuna salad inside. I'm gonna do them open-faced because I feel like it, I don't know, to me it like, seems like you're getting more and also you can put more tuna on it and get more protein. So I've got two pieces of my wheat bread here, just sprayed them with a little bit of cooking spray. You could also butter them or put margarine on them if you wanted to. And I'm just gonna toast these on one side and then we'll flip them over. And then we'll add a little bit of cheese. And we'll add some tuna to the top. Okay, and then we'll add a couple pieces of tomato. Here is our tuna melt. It's actually quite a lot of food. Um, with the potato wedges. So overall, this comes out to 650 calories, 43 grams of protein, which is fantastic. And I love tuna melt, so I'm very excited to eat this. Yum. Okay, so we're gonna make some black bean soup in this Dutch oven. I've got one tablespoon of olive oil, half of a green pepper that I diced up, the rest of the red onion that I diced up, and then I also added some diced jalapeno in there. And I've also got three cloves of garlic I'm gonna add into here. Okay, so I've added the black beans, about four cups of those, and four cups of water. Next, I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of oregano. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. Okay, we're gonna add some salt, pepper, and then this is just gonna simmer for about 30 minutes. So the black bean soup is done. I did let it cool a little bit because I'm gonna go ahead and puree a little bit of it just to thicken it up. Now, if you don't have one of these immersion blenders, you can just take some out and put it in a regular blender, uh, blend it up, and then put it back in with the soup. Okay, I think that's probably about good. Obviously, you don't wanna puree all of it. You just wanna puree enough where, see how it thickens up. To go with the salsa with the black bean soup, um, I made some homemade tortilla chips. So if you've never done these before, they're super easy. You just take the regular uh, corn tortillas, spray them with cooking spray, or you can toss them with olive oil or, olive oil or canola oil. Um, cut them into triangles or strips, however you want them. Toss them on a baking sheet. Uh, I bake these at 375 for 
I don't know, probably about 15 minutes, just kind of turn them over halfway through and they make the best tortilla chips. They're also really good if you deep fry them in oil. Obviously we're not doing that. This is a healthier video, but that is an option as well. Okay, so here's the black bean soup. I did add some sour cream and some chopped cilantro. You could also add some diced red onion if you wanted. Uh, it turned out super good. All I had to do was add a little bit of extra salt and then we've got our tortilla chips here with the homemade salsa. So for the soup, it's 270 calories, which is really good. Um, only four grams of fat, 15 grams of protein, and 18 grams of fiber. Um, and that's splitting that whole pot of soup into four, so four servings total. And then for each six tortilla chips, um, it would be 50 calories, so you can just add that. And then stuff like salsa, I don't know. I mean, obviously this has calories in it, but mostly it's just tomatoes, <laughs> so I don't always count it. But yeah, super filling dinner. Uh, for obviously very cheap and not a lot of calories. Pro tip, you can also dip the chips in the soup. If you guys are looking for some extreme budget dinner options, today is going to be a great video for you. I'm gonna be sharing five dinners for just $25 that can feed your family of four this week. And the meals that I'm planning to make this week are a lemon chicken with rice and peas. I'm also going to be making some creamy chicken enchiladas with refried beans, a Cajun beans and rice dish, a cheesy chicken broccoli bake with salad on the side, and some some grilled chicken with twice baked potatoes. All right, so we're definitely gonna have to do some prep work for these meals. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cook my pinto beans. I'm actually gonna cook them in the Instant Pot because it does not require soaking. So you can find this recipe on a pinchofhealthy.com, but all you need is a pound of dry pinto beans, five and a half cups of water, and then seasoning. So I normally keep a couple of different like bouillon options in my spice cabinet and I would encourage you to do the same because it honestly stretches really far and it's a really inexpensive way to add flavor to like rice and beans and different things like that. So the first example I have is this Knorr um, beef flavor bouillon. This is actually a powder that you can make um, beef broth out of. And then I also have this better than bouillon. This one is actually a vegetarian chicken base. However, I have a veggie one. Well, I think I have a veggie and a chicken one in the fridge right now. So that's what I'm gonna use to flavor my beans. Now, obviously, if you don't have this, you can spend a couple extra dollars to get that, or you can just use the spices you have in your spice cabinet. I would say salt, pepper, um, garlic powder would be really good in beans, obviously. So that's what I'm gonna use to flavor my water. So I mentioned earlier my cookbook, and if you're not familiar with that, it's the Essential Pantry Cookbook. And basically this cookbook does give you a list of pantry staples that I feel like everyone should have on hand. So let me know if you'd be interested in a separate video. I can probably do like a budget um, stock your pantry video. I think, like I said, it's really beneficial for people who are maybe in college or just starting out. But I do have sort of a list of spices that I would recommend um, in terms of everybody having on hand. So that is salt, pepper, chili powder, dried dill, Italian seasoning, garam masala can um, flavor Indian dishes, cumin, cayenne pepper, turmeric, and paprika. So those are the ones that I um, recommend. Obviously in this book I also included um, either vegetable or chicken stock, but again, you can also keep things like that in your spice cabinet. If you've never cooked with dried beans before, always make sure that you rinse them because they can have sand and dirt on them. And then also sometimes you'll find that like little pieces of like pebbles or you'll find beans that are like discolored and may not be the greatest. So those you kind of want to pick out. So if you ever are looking at like a recipe or like an older cookbook or something and it says rinse and sort your beans, this is what sorting your beans means. <laughs> so it means just pick out the parts that are um, yucky or the rocks and then we'll just use the rest. All right, so I've got my beans in my pressure cooker. I'm gonna add my five and a half cups of water. So this is what that vegetable base looks like or you know vegetable broth. Again, if you don't have this, don't, you know, don't worry about buying it if it's something that you really don't have in your budget. However, you can get that Knorr like chicken uh, bouillon powder. I think you can get that for like 
less than two dollars at walmart um, you may be able to get it at dollar tree too so definitely check that out i would um, recommend purchasing that if it's something that you have in your budget because i do think it gives a lot of flavor to things okay so i've mixed this up i'm not going to add any salt to this because the recipe said that it was salty enough just with the broth so I'm setting this on high pressure for 45 minutes. The next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and cook our rice for the week. So in my cookbook, I do have a recipe for baked brown rice. However, I did purchase white because it was cheaper. So we're just gonna measure this out and see how many cups we have in here. Um, the recipe that I have calls for two cups. So I just kind of wanna see how much we have. It looks like we have about two cups. So this is actually going to make around five cups of rice, maybe a little bit more, um, which we'll use with the lemon chicken recipe and also in the um, chicken and rice casserole. Now brown rice does take longer to cook. So the recipe that I have for brown rice takes about an hour to bake. This is white rice. So we're probably going to do it for, I don't know, maybe like 25 um, to 30 minutes should be good. All right, so I've got a couple tablespoons of butter in this baking dish here with my rice. Now, the recipe does call for this. However, it is definitely optional. You can add a drizzle of oil if you have that, or if you don't, you can just leave it out. It's not going to affect how the rice comes out. It's just going to affect, obviously, the flavor of it. So I'm boiling the water right now, and then we're going to pour in three and a third cups of boiling water, and we'll cover this with foil and bake it. So I went ahead and boiled my water, so I'm going to pour that in. And I try to kind of pour it over the butter <laughs> so the butter will melt a little bit. And then I just kind of distribute or try to distribute everything evenly in an even layer. Um, if you have a Dutch oven, I, I've never tried it, but I assume you could do this recipe in a Dutch oven too. Um, just anything that's oven safe and has a tight fitting lid, just because I'm doing it in a 9 by 13, I'm going to use foil. All right, so I've got my rice in there. I've also washed my potatoes and dried them and I pricked them a few times with a fork. Yes, in my experience, you do need to prick the potatoes because I have had a baked potato explode in the oven before when I did not pierce the skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of kill two birds with one stone and bake these potatoes while the rice is baking. Those will probably take about an hour. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is be a little bit strategic about how we're gonna divide up this chicken. So I need this to stretch for four meals. Um, two of the meals, I'm actually going to cook the chicken breast as is. So one is gonna be the lemon chicken with rice, and then the other one will just be like some grilled chicken cutlets. And then the other two recipes are the chicken enchiladas and the casserole. So for those, I need like cooked shredded chicken. So I'm thinking what I'll do is use maybe two chicken breasts for two of the meals that I'm gonna need shredded chicken for, and then the others, I'll use these three chicken breasts. Okay, so here's what I came up with. So in this dish here, I have four thin um, chicken breast cutlets, and this is gonna be for the grilled chicken that's gonna go with the twice baked potatoes. On this plate, I have chicken strips, um, basically two per person, so eight chicken strips. This is what is going to be used for the lemon chicken. And then on this plate here, I saved all of the scraps, and then I basically have one large chicken breast with about two thirds of another one. And this is all gonna be cooked in the Instant Pot for shredded chicken that's going to go with the enchiladas and the casserole. So hopefully this uh, all <laughs> works out, but you know, basically four meals out of that pack of chicken, I think it's pretty good. Okay, so for the chicken that we're going to basically grill or saute, however you wanna do it, um, I am going to season this because that is what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. So I am gonna drizzle this with just a little bit of olive oil use whatever oil you have on hand olive canola vegetable canola oil is definitely um, more inexpensive um, and honestly that is what I 
used often when I didn't have enough money to buy olive oil. I think that it worked just, works just fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some pepper. And then I like to add garlic powder. So I think, honestly, I think garlic powder, salt and pepper is a really good combination for flavoring um, regardless of what you're making. I kind of want to add lemon juice to this, but I'm worried I'm not going to have enough for the other recipes, so I'm going to hold off. I'm just going to add a little bit of thyme, and I think that will be good. Okay, so we're going to turn this over and season the other side, and the longer you can let this sit in the refrigerator, the more flavorful it will be. Um, I'm probably just going to let it sit for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, but you could let it go for a day if you wanted to. I think sometimes, you know, as I was talking about the olive oil, versus the canola oil thing. I think the food landscape and the nutrition landscape out there, especially not just on YouTube, but elsewhere, has just become so elitist, you know, in terms of like, well, you need to buy, you know, fair trade this and non-GMO this and organic this. And it's like, that, it, it is kind of an elitist way of thinking, right? Because that stuff you pay a premium for and not everyone can um, afford that. And so, you know, shaming people about whether or not they buy organic is really like <laughs> counterproductive. Um, yeah, so anyway, here's my chicken. I'm gonna cover this and put it in the fridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop my onion up. Now that I'm looking at my recipes, I probably could have been a little bit more strategic about my onion purchasing. Um, I probably could have gone with a smaller onion, but that's okay. We'll, we will make everything work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the shredded chicken for both the enchiladas and the um, chicken rice casserole. So we're gonna make that in the instant pot. I will link this chicken enchilada recipe down below. It is one that my sister has made a lot and it is so good. I've never actually made it before, um, but I've eaten it lots of times when she's made it. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna make. And this was kind of the recipe that I started planning everything around. And I thought, okay, well, if I'm gonna make these and I know I'm gonna make these, then I'm gonna plan everything around, you know, chicken dishes. Um, that way I can save money and not have to purchase, you know, multiple proteins and meats. I apologize for my ridiculous chopping job, but I'm using this flexible <laughs> cutting board that's like sliding all over the place. Okay, that's okay. Bobby Filet's not here measuring my onion dice, making sure that all the pieces are uniform. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have quite a bit of chopped onion here. I'm gonna save half of this for the rice and beans because I do need onion for that recipe. And then I think with the other half, I'm gonna use it in the broth that we're gonna cook the chicken in for the enchiladas and the casserole. All right, so in my Instant Pot, I have this on saute and I had four tablespoons of butter in there. Again, if you don't have butter on hand, do not fret, just use oil. Whatever oil you have on hand will work fine. You just need some type of you know, fat, either oil or butter in there to um, saute the onion. And then also we're gonna kind of make a, a roux out of this for the enchilada sauce. Okay, and while that is sauteing, I'm also going to cut up my jalapeno. Now again, if you wanna make this recipe the proper way, you can get a can of diced green chilies. I did not have it in my budget, so I think this is gonna work just fine. Basically, I mean, we just need a little bit of spice in the enchilada sauce. So I'm gonna add a quarter cup of flour to this. I'm gonna go ahead and consider the flour a pantry staple. You do need that to thicken the sauce. And then I'm just gonna cook this for a few minutes just to get that raw taste out of the flour. And then we'll add our liquid. Okay, so in this measuring cup here, I have four cups of liquid. It's two cups of water and then two cups of like whatever chicken broth or bouillon that you have on hand. You can use the better than bouillon or you can use the bouillon powder. Or again, if you don't have broth on hand, just use water and add extra seasoning spices. All right, so we're gonna add our chicken. Again, this is chicken breast and scraps that I trimmed off of the chicken when I cut it up. So I'm gonna turn off the saute. 
put the lid on and then we're gonna cook this on high for eight minutes and then we'll take the chicken out and shred it all right so our baked rice is done I had this in the oven for uh, I think I put it in for 28 minutes at 375 so now the key to this is to fluff it with a fork and then you want to let it sit uncovered for about five minutes because this is uh, what's going to help it not stick together if you cover it back up the liquid is going to seep back into the rice and you're going to end up with mushy rice So the next thing that I'm gonna do is shred our cheese. So for all of these recipes, the cheese needs to be shredded. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all at once. By and large, it is cheaper to buy, you know, a block of cheese and shred it yourself rather than buy pre-shredded and it also melts better. I'm gonna do this in my food processor because I have one, but if you don't have one, totally just shred it on a box grater it's not a big deal but if you do have a food processor it's very convenient because it is super quick okay so here is the cheese that i got out of those two blocks of cheese so i'm going to need some shredded cheddar for the broccoli chicken rice casserole and then i'm also going to need some of it for the twice baked potatoes and then some of it for the enchiladas so I'm probably going to end up using a little bit less cheese than some of the recipes call for just because I want to make it stretch. But I want to talk about cheese for just a second because I know that, you know, when you think of like budget friendly ingredients, you might not think of cheese as being one of them. However, I do want to say that cheese does have a decent amount of protein in it. It has about seven to eight grams of protein uh, per ounce, depending on the cheese. So not only can it help with flavoring your food, it also can help with satiety because it does have that protein in it and also it has fat in it. So when you eat something that has, you know, fat in it, like a higher, not necessarily a higher fat content, but has fat in it in terms of macros, you're going to feel full faster. And I think that's important, especially if you're trying to do budget meals and you're trying to make your meals stretch. So pepper jack, shredded cheddar, uh, let's move on to the rest. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is portion out my rice. So I need this to stretch for two meals. I'm going to take two and a half cups of rice out and set it aside. That's gonna be for the casserole. And then whatever remainder we have is going to be for the lemon chicken. So this is the rice that I measured out for the casserole. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but we're gonna mix this with shredded chicken and like a whole bag of broccoli, so it'll be fine. And then this is the remainder that I had in this container right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge. And then when we make the lemon chicken, this will go with that dinner. Um, rice reheats really easily in the microwave like all you have to do is dump this into a bowl maybe add a few teaspoons of water just to make sure it doesn't dry out cover it up and heat it up for a couple minutes and you can also freeze rice also um, it freezes really well if you want to make a big batch ahead of time okay so my beans are done but the recipe says to do a natural pressure release basically until there's no pressure left in the pot um, this is not an instant pot so it doesn't really have like the valve that I can see but I just tried a little bit and there's still <laughs> there's still pressure in there so we're gonna let that go let it sit I mean um, but the chicken is also done and that one we can do a quick release on so you can see here like with the instant pot um, you know the red valve is up that means there's still pressure in it make sure that when you let the pressure go um, you don't have it under your cabinet because it will um, take the finish off your cabinet ask me how I know I also wanted to mention too if you do not have an instant pot and you want to make these recipes you totally can um, this particular recipe for the chicken I would just simmer it on the stove probably for about 20 minutes um, for the beans you can definitely find a recipe to make those on the stovetop as well I just want to say that you know things don't always come out like we like them to case in point you could let your instant pot release and spew enchilada sauce all over your kitchen and all over your other instant pot it's fine it happens to the best of us you know if, if this does happen you can kind of drape a paper towel over there to um <laughs> kind of try to sop up some of the liquid um it's yeah i'm gonna let this sit before i try to release the rest all right, so that was a debacle. Okay, here's the cooked chicken. I'm gonna set this aside and let it cool. 
in here we have the start of our enchilada sauce um, you can see the onions and the jalapenos still in there so those are going to give some flavor to the sauce and then we have our beans i have not tasted one yet but these look just about perfect so little effort and um, really delicious for a pound of dried beans so our baked potatoes are done and you can tell when they're done when you just squeeze them i usually just use a towel and then i squeeze like this and if they feel like they're tender they're done so when you're making twice baked potatoes look at the shape of the potato and figure out which way it lies flat okay so like ex for example that's a bad example <laughs> this potato it's not going to sit up well <laughs> i'm not proving my point anyway what i'm trying to say is that there's usually a flat side side and a more curved side so you want to make sure that you cut the potato in the way that you want it to like lay in the dish so in this case i'm going to cut it this way so that my two halves can lay like that and then this one i'll probably cut this way there okay so now i'm not going to use a recipe for these particular twice baked potatoes but i'll try to link one down below that um, is similar but essentially you can flavor these however and all you're going to do is scoop out the flesh of the potato and i like to leave a little bit in there just so it kind of gives the skin the potato skin some structure um but honestly i mean i know potatoes are cheap but like this is a good example of being able to stretch you know two potatoes um, for four people and also twice baked potatoes um, will refrigerate and freeze really well also so you can make them ahead of time so i'm just gonna take all of the flesh out of these and then basically this is kind of how you want your shell to be left and then i'll put it um, in a bowl and then we'll add some sour cream and cheese to it okay so here are my potatoes in the bowl here i added a couple tablespoons of butter if you don't have butter on hand just leave it out and add more salt salt fixes everything so I'm gonna go ahead and salt this. I already peppered it. And then I just have a potato masher here and we're gonna mash this up. Now, in full disclosure, I only really purchased enough sour cream to make the casserole and the enchiladas. However, we're gonna take a couple tablespoons of sour cream and put it in here. And I think it's gonna be fine. We'll just have a little bit less sour cream in the other recipes. So the potato filling is done. Make sure that you give it a taste to make sure that it's properly seasoned. Add more salt or pepper if it needs it. And then I'm just gonna start stuffing these. Potatoes are really, I feel like, one of nature's greatest gifts to us. Like honestly, you can do so many things with a potato and they're so cheap. And for so long, I, you know, when I had this like disordered, eating slash thinking about carbs i just i don't know i always felt guilty when i ate potatoes but now i'm in a better place and i love them a baked potato is also you know even just a plain baked potato topped with like sour cream maybe some broccoli cheese butter i mean that's a meal in and of itself i eat that i eat that for a meal any day we've got our four potatoes here now you can customize these in a myriad of different ways you could add bacon you could add cheese, you could put broccoli in there. I'm gonna put some ham on them just because that's what I purchased um, you know, with our groceries. Let me grab a baking dish. I'm gonna place these in my baking dish. Now, most of the time when I make these, I do you know, throw all caution to the wind and put shredded cheese in the filling as well. But since we're trying to keep our costs down, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the top and they're still gonna be super delicious. Okay, now ham. So this half pound ham steak, we're actually gonna use for several different meals. So the bulk of it, I'm gonna be using in my rice and beans, but I also want some of it for um, the refried beans, which I, again, I know sounds odd, but we're just kind of using that like salty pork flavor. Um, and then I wanna use part of it in the potatoes as well. So I think I'm gonna do like, I don't know, two thirds maybe for the rice and beans and then the rest will just dice up um, for the other purposes. Sometimes I feel like the smaller you chop things up, the more it looks like you have. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably just like a trick of the eye, but it still helps in terms of like stretching ingredients. 
Okay, so I grabbed my cheddar cheese and uh, good thing for me that my daughter Kira doesn't really like cheese on her potatoes because then I get to save money and leave it off of hers. <laughs> but basically I'm just gonna take like maybe a tablespoon of cheese and put it on the top of here. I mean, that's just, that's gonna give it, you know, just enough flavor um, to where it still tastes cheesy, but you know, it didn't, didn't cost much to do it. Okay, boom, that looks pretty delicious and it didn't cost hardly any money at all. Okay, so I have my oven set to 400. I'm gonna pop these in there for maybe like 10, 15 minutes, just kind of warm everything through and melt the cheese. For this ham, I'm gonna save this for the refried beans. So I'm just gonna pop it into this little cup right here. Even if you're not making these budget meals, this ham steak is like I said, a really good value. And you could use this chopped ham for so many things. You could put it on salads, you could put it in uh, what? You could put it in omelets, eggs, whatever you want. Okay, so then this, the rest of this is gonna be for the um, Cajun style beans and rice. So I'm gonna cut this up just a little bit larger and then put this in a separate container. All right, and then we'll pop these in the fridge for later. So we're gonna go ahead and saute our chicken breast to go on the side of the potatoes. So I'm just gonna heat this skillet over medium high heat with a little bit of olive oil. This is a stainless skillet, so it's gonna give us that good crust on the outside of the chicken. My pan is preheated, I'm gonna add my chicken. So the potatoes are done. Here's what they look like. You know, I did put some chives on some of them because I have chives for free on my deck because they're perennial and they grow every year without me having to do anything with them. Um, but obviously you can leave those off. It's still gonna be just as good. And then here is the chicken breast. All right, so here's our first dinner. Twice baked potato with some chicken breast and I just have a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side. So this plate comes out to $1.25. Uh, well, all of these plates are going to come out to $1.25 actually, so definitely a really good thrifty deal. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the beans that I ended up getting out of that pound. So I ended up getting a little over three cups of beans in each container. So this is probably equivalent to four cans of, like four regular size cans of pinto beans, um, which would normally cost me over $2.00 at Walmart, but obviously half price if you cook your own. So one of these is gonna go for refried beans and then the other one is going to go for the um, Cajun style beans. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do next is work on shredding my chicken and then I'm gonna go ahead and put together the chicken broccoli rice casserole. Um, because that can just sit in the fridge until I'm ready to make it this week. So since this bag of broccoli from Walmart is steamable, I'm just gonna pop this right in the microwave and cook it like that. All right, so I can already tell you guys that I definitely made an oops. <laughs> and that is that I don't think I bought enough rice for all of my dishes. I totally forgot that I needed rice for um, to go with the Cajun beans. So we're gonna make it work, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna use every little bit of this chicken. That's kind of why I threw those scraps in there so that I could pull um, the what's left of the meat off of it. But anyway, we're gonna make it work. It's gonna be fine. All in all, I think we're actually gonna have a more, well, I wanna say more food than we need. Um, I mean, it is tight. I, I was actually debating not calling this video an extreme budget. However, I do think feeding a family of four on $5, you know, total for one meal um, is an extreme budget. I mean, now if you're just doing beans and rice, rice and beans, cough, cough, Dave Ramsey, then fine. But if you're actually trying to like include animal protein and, you know, green veggies and stuff like that, it can be a little bit more difficult. This has been challenging. So I think probably what I'll end up doing is just use less rice than I was going to um, with the casserole and the lemon chicken. 
because I am going to be serving peas with the lemon chicken as well and it should it should all work out I mean beans are pretty I think you know beans are pretty filling anyway so it should be okay all right so all my chicken is shredded you guys I really this is the only waste that I had from that huge pack of chicken it's just like a little bit of fat here so um, I'm gonna give this to Murphy Okay, so here's how we're gonna divide the chicken up. So most of the chicken I have on this plate, that is what we're gonna use for um, the enchiladas. There's also gonna be cheese in the enchiladas, so we're gonna have to work to make this stretch for 10 to 12 tortillas, but I think we can do it. Um, and then this chicken here is gonna go into the broccoli rice casserole. Definitely in casseroles, you can get away with using less meat than you normally would because it's in small pieces and it's kind of distributed uh, throughout the casserole. Okay, so I've got my rice in here, my pre-cooked rice. Um, this is for the casserole, so I'm gonna open my broccoli, toss that in there, and then add the chicken, and then I set this aside while we make the sauce. Okay, so for the recipe for this casserole, you need um, one can of cream of chicken soup. I actually prefer the Campbell's brand, but since uh, we're, we're doing this on a budget, we're definitely using the great value because it is half the price. Okay, and then you need one cup of sour cream. I'm gonna be using a little bit less than one cup, again, because I took a couple of tablespoons out for the um, potatoes and then the juice of one lemon so what I've done is already I've zested this lemon uh, because we want to make sure that we're gonna extract all of the flavor from that before we juice it and I will be using that lemon zest in the um, lemon chicken that I make later in the week I tried to choose the the juiciest lemons that I could so hopefully that works but um, definitely if you can, don't skip the lemon juice in this recipe because it really does brighten up the flavor of the casserole. Okay, so this recipe does call for about a third a cup of milk. If you don't have milk and you're truly doing this um, on a super tight budget, then just use water. I mean, no one's gonna know in the, in the final dish. I have milk and so that's what I'm using. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be fine okay and then mustard this is something that i would recommend adding if you have it i think most people probably keep mustard in their refrigerator the recipe calls for dijon mustard which is what i'm using because i happen to have some of these packets if you don't have dijon mustard use yellow mustard if you don't have yellow mustard and you have mustard powder um, like from the spice section use that as well. Okay, now I'm not gonna add any salt to this because I think it's probably gonna be salty enough with the cream of chicken soup and then also um, the cheese that we're gonna put in. So this is basically the sauce, I guess you could call it, for the casserole. So the next thing that we're gonna do is add all of our ingredients along with some cheese. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add about two cups of cheese. I'm not gonna measure. I'm gonna be a little bit shy because we're gonna put some on the top as well. Okay, and then just mix this up and we'll put it into a casserole dish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same casserole dish that I used to make the rice because why not? It's already, <laughs> it's already dirty and it just had rice in it. So I'm gonna spray it if you don't have cooking spray, just brush it with a little bit of vegetable oil. If you don't have that, just, I don't know, <laughs> just leave it out, but it does help it from sticking a little bit. This actually makes quite a bit of food. I mean, I think that, you know, I planned to have this with that garden salad on the side. Um, in hindsight, I think I could have left that out and purchased more rice for the other recipe. Um, but obviously to make it more of a complete meal, you know, a salad on the side is is perfectly fine. And if you're a vegetarian and you want to try this recipe, just leave the chicken out. It's just as good. You probably have to use cream of mushroom soup though instead of cream of chicken soup. I mean, honestly, this could probably serve 
six people if some of those were kids otherwise you know you have four portions of this that's that's quite a bit of food okay so we're just gonna take a little bit of cheese and sprinkle it over the top and then this is ready to go so um, I'm not gonna bake this tonight because we're obviously not having it for dinner tonight but when I do I will show it to you and it's really 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 delicious okay so for the enchiladas what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of assemble them but keep the sauce separate so that they don't get soggy and then when it's time to bake them we can just add the sauce and bake them so i have the remainder of my shredded chicken here and i'm adding that to a bowl and then i'm going to add about two cups of shredded cheese so one cup of the pepper jack and then about one cup of the cheddar and then I'm just gonna toss this together now I will say that I feel like the cheese to chicken ratio is a bit higher than it would be if I were making the recipe uh, normally just because of the you know budget constraints we have but it's all gonna turn out fine so back to the enchilada sauce um, this has now cooled the chicken broth and like pepper and onion mixture so I have my one cup of sour cream remaining here I'm gonna whisk that into the broth and once it is combined totally then I'm gonna turn the instant pot back on to saute and we're gonna whisk in like a little bit of a cornstarch slurry and some of the cheese Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in, I don't know, about half a cup of cheese maybe and give this a whisk. And once this starts to come to a bubble, I just have some cornstarch, just about a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch mixed with a tiny bit of cold water. And we'll just put that in to thicken the sauce. So here is my sauce. I added the cornstarch and you can see that it thickened up a little bit. So I'm gonna let this cool. I will give it a taste and see if it needs salt and pepper or anything like that. Okay, and then I'm just rolling my enchiladas. So I have a nine by 13 dish here that I greased. And basically what I'm doing is I'm taking one tortilla and I'm using a quarter cup uh, measuring cup to make sure that I get an equal amount in each enchilada. And then I'm just taking them, rolling them up, and adding them seam side down to the dish. All right, so enchiladas, here's the game plan. So we have all of our tortillas rolled up with the chicken and the cheese. So I did end up getting 11 out of this. I have an extra tortilla. If I would have not stuffed some of them so full, I probably <laughs> would have been able to get 12 out of them, but that's fine. If you make this recipe as written, written, <laughs> you're gonna have a lot more filling because the original recipe calls for like two pounds of chicken. And I probably, use like maybe a pound if that so enchiladas here here's the sauce i did taste it it needed a little bit of salt and pepper so i added that this is a really unique tasting sauce so i would definitely recommend trying this recipe thank you again to my sister for giving it to me um, and then here's the cheese so when we're ready to assemble we'll just pour the sauce over the enchiladas add the cheese and bake at 350 for about 30 minutes all right so tonight we are having the chicken enchiladas so I have my sauce here and I just took the foil off of these so I'm not sure if I'm gonna use all of this sauce it's kind of a lot um, I don't know I guess we'll try we'll try that and then I'm gonna put the cheese on the top on top so these are gonna go in the oven um, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes until everything is heated through and the cheese is bubbly okay so for the refried beans I am going to um, I have some oil in the Dutch oven here I'm using canola oil but you can use olive oil or butter if you have bacon bacon grease on hand you can use that then you don't need to use the ham but again we're modifying to fit our budget here so I have probably about three to four tablespoons of oil in there and I'm going to add this ham um, and then I have three cloves of the garlic that I purchased so I'm going to put that 
into the pan and just kind of saute that a little bit before I put the beans in. Okay, so these are the beans that I pre-cooked, so I'm gonna add those. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the liquid too because I'm gonna cook these down while the um, enchiladas are in the oven. So basically then all you wanna do is just simmer these over about medium heat and mash them. And as you simmer them, they will sort of cook down and get thicker. And then you can season them with salt, pepper. I usually put cumin in there. Um, you can put cayenne pepper if you want and coriander um, if you have it. If not, you can leave that out. Okay, so here are the refried beans that I finished. So I did end up using my immersion blender to blend these up a little bit um, just because they were a little bit chunky for my liking, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So I blended those, I added um, salt, pepper, some cumin and a little bit of extra garlic powder and they taste really good and then here are those chicken enchiladas i highly recommend that you try this recipe even if you're not doing the budget meals they are so so good so i'm gonna plate this up okay so here are the enchiladas so i made enough so that everyone can have three um, that will serve four and I'm assuming that will have leftover beans So if I have leftover refried beans, I'm actually going to incorporate those into the Cajun beans So you'll see that but once again definitely recommend this recipe. I'll have it linked down below uh, This looks delicious Definitely delicious for a extreme budget meal. All right, so here is tonight's dinner I thought I'd share it with you guys how this turned out So this is the chicken broccoli and rice casserole after I baked it you can see that this makes a huge <laughs> pan so I think definitely this divided by four would feed four people and then on the side we're just gonna have that garden salad that I bought and I had some um, croutons and some dressing just that I had in the house so I'm gonna toss that with this and this is what we're gonna have for our five dollar dinner tonight pretty good okay so the next meal I'm gonna show you guys is some lemon chicken and this is something I um, ate when I was a kid. I can remember my mom making it, although back I feel like in the 90s, um, chicken in the grocery stores was very expensive, like more expensive than ground beef. So I felt like, I felt like when my mom made this when I was a kid, it was like a super huge treat um, to have it, which is funny that I'm now making it for a budget meal. But I decided to make it in this video because it really fit in with the other ingredients that I had. So I have my chicken breast here that I cut into strips. I seasoned that with salt and pepper. I also have the lemon zest that I uh, reserved from that lemon we used for the casserole. I have some flour. That is not necessarily um, required. You can make this without the flour, but the sauce won't be as thick. I have a couple cloves of garlic, and I wanted to mention this little rubber tool that I've been using to peel my garlic. It works great. Um, I'll link this down below. I'm sure I got it on Amazon. And then I have my other lemon here. Before I sliced this up, I went ahead and grated it into my chicken broth. So this is just two cups of chicken broth that I made with some bouillon powder. So what I'm gonna do is mix the flour in this bag with the chicken and kind of shake it up so all of the chicken can get coated. And I'll probably add in some of this lemon zest too, just because we kind of want to make it as flavorful as possible. So if you've never used one of these little garlic rollers, which I hadn't before I purchased this one, it actually works really well to peel the garlic. Um, it's like, it's magical. <laughs> Not really, but you know what I mean. And then I just use my garlic press to um, crush the garlic into the skillet. So there you go, super easy. And then this is the garlic press I have. I purchased a new one not too long ago because the old one I had was like very, it was starting to get kind of yucky. I probably shouldn't put it in the dishwasher as often as I do, but I, I don't know, I can't help myself. Okay, so I've got a skillet here and you want to choose a skillet that you have a lid to. And I have a little bit of oil in the bottom of there. I did put a little bit of butter in just because I had it in the fridge. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can just use oil um, if that's what you have. But we're just gonna saute these chicken strips. You don't have to necessarily make sure that they're entirely cooked through while you're sauteing them because we are gonna simmer this in the sauce for a little bit. So hopefully I can fit all of these in here. Um, I basically calculated eight chicken strips. Some are smaller and some are larger, but I thought that would be enough for 
four people. And then we're gonna serve this with some of the rice. We're really gonna have to ration the rice in between this meal and the Cajun beans. So we'll see how that works. But for now, I'm just gonna brown this on the first side, uh, flip it over, and then I'll show you how to make the sauce. Okay, so after I flipped the chicken, I added the garlic. Now I'm just gonna place my lemons over the top of the chicken. And then we'll pour in the broth and then this is gonna simmer covered for about 20 minutes. Um, this is also a really great weeknight meal because it doesn't take very long. So keep that in mind. So about two cups of chicken broth and then I'm just going to simmer this over medium heat and I'll show you when it's done. So do you ever just like lift the lid of a pot you're cooking something and it's like oh yeah I know that smell. It takes me back. <laughs> That's what I feel like every time I make this. So here's the lemon chicken. I did simmer this on probably low to medium low for about 20 minutes. You can see here that the sauce is still really liquidy. That's how I like it. I I like to pour it over my rice. Um, if you wanted to thicken it, you can add some cornstarch. Definitely add salt and pepper to taste. Um, you can see how the um, flour breading kind of sticks to the chicken. Now, if this bothers you, like if you're like, oh, that's soggy, I'm not gonna eat it, then just leave the flour out of the recipe. I like it, that's how we always had it growing up, so it's fine for me. Um, and then I steamed up some peas, that bag of peas I got at Walmart just in the microwave, super easy. And then here is how I'm serving it. So I am rationing out the rice a little bit because I do have to make it stretch for the Cajun rice and beans also. So I have a little bit of rice down here and then two chicken strips with some lemon. I seasoned it with salt and pepper and I have my peas on the side. So that is tonight's $5 dinner, yum. Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys now this recipe for Cajun inspired beans and rice. Now obviously we are modifying this a little bit because we didn't have enough in our budget to buy the andouille or smoked beef sausage, so we're going to use ham, but it's going to be just as delicious. So I have my pan heating up here with just a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. I'm going to add our chopped onion that we had left over. If you have peppers, on hand you can definitely add them to this as well um, and then i'm going to add my diced ham and then i have four garlic cloves i'm not going to add those quite yet because i want to make sure that they don't burn but i'm just going to saute this for a couple minutes until the onions are soft um, and then i'll show you the rest now we are going to use some of these leftover refried beans from the other night because it's going to help thicken our um, beans but obviously if you didn't have any leftovers from that meal you can just leave those out okay so I have two cups of veggie broth here I'm gonna add this it still hasn't dissolved all the way I need to rinse out that cup cooking with one hand is always <laughs> it's always fun okay so I'm gonna stir this up and then I have um, the other half of my beans here so Again, you could use about two cans of pinto beans if you're not um, following this particular budget meal plan. But I'm just gonna stir this up. I'm gonna add a little bit of my refried beans and then I'm gonna get my seasonings together. Okay, so in this little bowl, I have some paprika, some cayenne pepper, some Italian seasoning and some salt and pepper. You can definitely adjust the cayenne to your liking. If you use spicy sausage, you definitely wanna cut back on that. So I'm just gonna stir this in, and now I will let this simmer until it thickens up. So sometimes when I make this, I do thicken it with a little bit of cornstarch, and sometimes I don't. It just depends on how it turns out. I probably won't have to thicken it with cornstarch today, um, just because I put those refried beans in there, but we'll see how it goes. All right, here is my completed Cajun style beans and rice. OMG, so good. I tasted it and the flavor is like spot on. I love it when that happens. Definitely adjust this to your taste. You can add hot sauce if you want. 
additional salt and pepper. Um, like I said, the spiciness of it is going to depend on the meat that you use. So since I used ham, I did add about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, but in the past when I've used andouille sausage, I cut back on that just so it's not as spicy. Um, but I'm going to plate this up and I will show you how it looks. If you have a little bit of extra room in your budget, you can make some cornbread on the side. Um, but this is definitely a really like huge pan, like hearty portions for four people. All right, so here's how I'm going to serve this up. I have one of these shallow bowls. I think I actually got these at Ikea like years and years ago, but they're great for meals like this. So I just put some of the beans in the bottom of the bowl. And then here's a tip. If you want to like eat less rice or if you're <laughs> rationing out your rice like I am for this challenge, um, just pack like your rice into a half a cup measuring cup and flip it over on top. Rather than putting the rice under the beans, it also helps not get the rice so soggy. And then I garnished it with just a little bit of dried parsley. Uh, definitely recommend recipes like this, especially if you're budget cooking, because they're super hearty and filling. I mean, the carb, the carb police aren't gonna like a meal like this because it's full of carbs. However, if you are eat, if you're truly eating on a budget, it, it matters not how many carbs you have because this is lots of good protein um, and it's going to keep you full for a long time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out June's journey. I'll have that QR code on the screen right here for you to download. It's also linked in the description box below and all of the information for these recipes will be in the description box as well. So check that out. And if you want to see what I cooked on vacation, you can click on this video right here.